Manopause moment. Uh oh. Manopause? Oh, fuck. Well, I get them some bitches. I get the fucking get the tears yeah. going and oh, emotional babe. and shit. It was, it was manopause from mom and me. Welcome to the Big Honker Podcast, brought to you by Stanfield Hunting Outfitters. I'm Jeff Stanfield with the world famous Andy Shaver. Kyle Man Clay Reed is in studio. Yep, we got him back one more time. One more time. You know, you, you'd think the more I do this, the more comfortable I get, but I think I'm more <laughs> nervous. I get. Ah. So, be in town. Hide your wives. Now it's hide your grandmas, probably. Oh yeah. Definitely hide your grandma. It's not a do- it's not a hide your daughter's deal no more, is it? No. <laughs> if you were single, would you date a girl under thirty? Me? Yes. If I was single? If you're single. I I would date a herd of them motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, my daddy's still fucking. He's a goddamn near 80 years old and got like a 24-year-old girlfriend. Yeah. So that would be the course you would take? Uh, huh? That's the route you would take? Hell, yeah. Yeah, of course, I told my old man, I said, do you get anything out of this? As long as them goddamn blue pills keep working, I got that sure day. <laughs> There's a video going around. Y'all might have seen it. it. Wife comes in. She said, would you would you punch me for a billion dollars? Yes. Says that to the husband. He's like, yeah. He's like, I'd fuck, you'd have to you'd have to pay to get me off of you. Yeah, no shit. I would beat that son of a bitch to a pulp. <laughs> he was like, he just kept like she'd kind of walk away and he'd like, for a billion dollars? I'd back over you with my car for a billion dollars. Hell for thirty dollars, I'd beat my wife <laughs> right now. We uh we saw an interesting thing when we were in Mexico a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. We saw tequila. A- we saw some tequila. We saw an actual man with tits. Nice tits too, Clay. I mean, me and your wives both have fake I've been ones. lifting mine for a <laughs> C-cup. This, this, this dude had a $10,000 set of titties. Easy. 15000 maybe. And Andy called it first. I did. Because she, she walked up some stairs behind us, and we were sitting there, and uh, Trevor Austin was with us, and Trevor goes, look, Jeff, look there. And he, I pointed, and I looked around, around, and this girl pulls her top down, or this this halter top down. I was like, God damn. I really want to hear this story. Yeah, you do. <laughs> it's interesting. And so she pulled her top down, and I was like, Damn. And then I said, oh, they're throwing her out. And then she went outside. Then she comes in the bar. She starts looking at us, and she's rubbing and kissing on this old boy and stuff. And Chance danced with her. And then Tony danced with her kind of a little bit. Andy goes, that's a dude. I go, what? He goes, I'm telling y'all, that's a fucking guy. (laughs) Chance goes, oh, those boobs are too nice to be mans. They, they, They can put fake tits on anybody. Oh, yeah. So anyways, so I go to the bathroom, and I come back, and they're playing boot scoot and boogie. And Chance is boot scooting with this old guy. I'm starting to vomit right and now. So, anyways, uh, the bartender comes over and I ask him, I go, You speak good English? He goes, Yeah, I speak perfect English. I go, Guys or girls? He goes, Oh, all three of them are guys. I was like, <laughs> I started laughing and shit. Well, do you ever remember? I know he's too young, but remember the old Donahue show? Yeah. I remember, <laughs> I remember watching the Donahue show one time and there was a guy on there and they, I think he was like a lawyer. And all of his buddy lawyers, they got on there and they bet him a hundred thousand dollars that he wouldn't get implants and wear them for a year. <clears throat> and he did it, and he had won. And he was on the old Donahue show, and uh, uh, he tells him, you know, I understand the bet's been over for like a month and a half, but you're still wearing the boobs. He goes, yeah, I got to wear it kind of like. Them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a picture of the guy? Yeah, I'm a, well, I don't know. Hang on. You can put it up there. I mean, wait, no, no, I'm going to. Um, well, what do you put? But anyways, I, I don't want to see no dude titties. No, no. Uh, you, I want you to see how the not. I mean, there. You could see, and this poor guy dude, got trapped I, into it. I, I have. Seen watch, it. watch this. Watch this. Well, it's not the video, oh. but. I mean, you know, not a not an attractive, not super super attractive, but it was the wide nose that gave it away for me. Uh, I knew, but that poor guy, he went. He ended up. We saw him later that night. He was in a cab. Got going the home. cab with him. <laughs> No, no, no. So no. the funny thing is there's these two teenage boys mm-hmm. that are with their dad. And they're making out with this thing. 
And Dad that, thought he was doing good by these boys. You know, let them get a little bit of culture. I come all the way down here to the big fucking <laughs> honker lodge, goddamn dude, to talk about man titties. Mm-hmm. So, so this guy, the kid, the kids leave. He sends the kids home. <clears throat> Dad comes back down by himself. So, and he's kind of. Kind of hugging on these old gals, and then, and then the dad leaves. Everybody leaves. He did that. The next day, we're sitting there eating dinner outside at this restaurant, and here comes these two boys. Well, I'm not going to pass up, not get a chance to tell them they're kissing on a guy. So I told him this one kid was arguing. No, 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 no. So I'm the next night, and I said something. Good. And one kid goes, "That starts to make sense because she had a really strong grip." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this reason I'm telling you this. A friend of ours, Matt Sullivan, went the same town. We were in Nisla Maharis. Matt just got back. He sends me a text the other day while he's down there, and he was at that bar. And I said, "You better watch it over there." He goes, "Oh, I know what he said. This one old chick. He sends me a picture. He goes, that's a that's a that's a man. That's not even a woman.' I said, "That place is famous for it, so you better watch out." Oh, uh-huh. like I say, I know some that'll that'll get your ass in trouble that are finer than fuck that you would never ever in your life. Remember, I got showed one one buddy. I said, "Hell, I found you, uh, I found you a woman." I showed him a picture of it. And he goes. Hell yeah, set me up. I said, that's a dude. He goes, I don't give a fuck. I'll suck that motherfucker dick. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was in New Orleans one time at a bar, and he said he was in there, and he said, there's a shiny old gal come in. My dad was a good-looking strapping guy when he was a young guy. He said, good-looking old gal sitting out there in the bar, and dad told the bartender, he said, send her a drink. He said, you sure, Ron? He said, hell yeah. Send her a drink. And she said, thank you, and took a drink. Stuff dad so walked down there. He said, would you like to dance? She goes, uh, no, thank you, but maybe later. It's like, fuck that shit. <laughs> Every time I think about that, I think, you remember the Theater X is downtown, mm-hmm. down there on Indiana? You know, we went down there one time, and uh, I went with a bunch of older boys. They could get in there. I, I was like 15, 16 years old, so I had to sit outside while they went in there and bought the, they were going to buy some uh, pornos, you know, and I'm sitting out there, you know, just looking around, all of a sudden this little old short bald Fat guy come walking out and he goes, Hey, how's it going to dance? Oh, it's all right. He said, uh, Man, we sure could use running. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking that my damn self. And he goes, Hey, uh, you want to make a quick $10? And I said, Yeah, hell yeah. And I'm dumb. And he goes, Okay, let me suck your cock. <laughs> I'll put him to sleep after that. <laughs> I hit that mother. But boy, it took me a minute. I was like, What the fuck is You want to let me suck your cock? I really need $10. And, uh, I went ahead and put him to sleep. $10 was a lot of money back then. Like $10, $10. You'd have been on the right side of it yeah. at least. Wouldn't that be gay if I let him sleep? I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. You'd have been $10 richer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's fucking up. The only, thing, the only thing would have made that a perfect story is if Tony and Chance would have taken them girls home. Yeah. You know, oh, my God. We'd have had so much fun with that shit. Mm. Yeah. Give the old reach around and go, hey, uh, hey, what the hell? Do like Crocodile this Dundee. Ain't, this ain't yeah. no skin tag yeah. around yeah. here. Yeah. Just checking to see what that is down there. I worry about my kids, though, because, like, there's some good plastic surgeons out there. Oh, I'm telling I mean, you, you know, I'm, it, you, it's I'm, not just, it doesn't just jump out at you. Yeah, like, they, they hide them. I mean, it's, yeah, nowadays you don't know what's what. We we have a mutual friend, and I'm not going to say his name on air because he doesn't deserve this. But. <clears throat> well, if I figure it out, I may say it. <laughs> you, 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 won't, you won't figure it out, I don't think. Anyways, he moved to Dallas, and I lived in Dallas for a while, and we'd all, we'd go out some nights and stuff. And so he tells me, he goes, I want to ask y'all a question. There's four of us there, all Ryder boys and me, and because they all went to Ryder. And he, I go, what do you got? He goes, listen. He goes, the other night I went to Cowboys, and he said, this old gal come up to me and knew me by name. And he goes, I couldn't, I, she went to where his place of work is. I, I'm going to give this away if I say where he works, because then everybody in Wichita Falls knows him, will know who I'm talking about. And he said, she come into work, and so he's around people a lot of times. And he goes, I just thought I'd know her from work. And he goes, we danced and danced. He said, I went home with her. Got done that night. And he said, something just didn't feel right. It just, something about it was just a little awkward. He goes, I couldn't figure out those. And he said, I got done. I'm thinking to leave. She goes, do you remember me? He goes, no, you look kind of familiar. And look, I, let's say her name was Jamie, because I can't remember the name. And she goes, yeah, I used to be James. Mm. And that look you got, Clay, is the same look he t- had when he told me this story. He goes, do you think I'm gay, Jeff? <laughs> I said, I don't think so. I think you just got somebody just used you up. He goes, You think I'm gonna go to hell now? I said, I, I don't I think God will give you a pass since you didn't know it was a man that turned into a woman. He goes, You sure I'm not gay? I said, I don't think so. 
Did you, did you like it? <laughs> Are you going back for seconds? Because right. you know, then you might then be. You might, then you might be. <laughs> might be a cocksucker. Then. He goes. Yeah. He goes. I just. He goes. Man, I'm really confused. At what I am now. God. He was really. It really bothered him for a long time. I go. What'd you do? He goes. I went and bought a bottle of fucking scope. Is what I did. <laughs> I kept washing my mouth. I tell you what, I'd have done. I'd have took that to my fucking grave. <laughs> yeah, I probably would not have told this nobody. A motherfucker in the world and I never know, heard that story. I told him I would never tell a soul. Yeah, I've never told a soul who told me. I've told yeah. the story yeah. a couple of times, but I've never told a soul. Well, if I saw, thing. if I saw him today, I would bring it up to him. You you know? I wished I, wished I had a nickel for every time I told somebody. I'll never tell a soul. <laughs> <laughs> and then go straight to the cafe. Well, you don't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> Your well, secret is safe with I, me. Speaking of Clay's secrets, I was at the casino Monday, and I'm sitting on a machine, and a guy's looking through the machine at me. He's kind of looking at me. You know, you can tell when someone thinks they know you. And he goes, hey, are you Jeff? I said, yeah. Jeff Stanfield I said, yes. Yeah, yeah. He goes, I used to be roommates with Clay Reed. And I knew him because at the bar, I used to hang out with him at the bar sometimes. Really nice guy. Anyways, he told me to tell Clay hello. Yeah, and that son of a bitch is scarred for life. <laughs> for for the few months that he lived. Man, super, super nice guy. Super nice guy. And I don't mind telling his fucking name because he's one of my best friends, old Charles Adams. Yep. And old Charles, when we went to school, he was... He's a big, muscled up motherfucker. And he's still pretty big. Cut like a bag of dope. I mean, goddamn. And I mean, it was instant pussy. He was the greatest <laughs> fucking wingman because wherever I went, because I think at one time he was the middleweight powerlifting champion of Texas. I he mean, was, he was a, had black perm kind of in the oh back, yeah, long hair. Back, and, you know, kind of a Latin lover guy. I mean, <laughs> fucking, I mean, but stout is a motherfucker and uh, wouldn't fuck with nobody but one of them motherfuckers you didn't want to fuck with. And I was glad he <laughs> simple, was my goddamn simple, friend. Simple, nice guy. Yeah, damn. But uh, we lived together and he worked at the Coors plant. And that's one thing about old Charles, that son of a bitch, when he works, I mean, he is by the, he is the best employee you could ever get in your life. Where Clay is probably the worst. He, <laughs> me and him were Oscar and Felix on the odd couple. <laughs> you know, my room would be, we lived over there on Fairway in the uh, Deer uh, skin, Deerfield? No, uh, Fair, uh, Fairview apartment, you know, right off Fairway. And uh, we live there and my room, I mean, it, it would be destroyed. Now, Charles was OCD by the fucking book. I mean, his shit was clean, but I mean, and we partied all the fucking time. And uh, but I'll never forget that one time. It, it was on a Thursday. He said he worked at the Cruise Plant. No, Charles told me he said, "Hey Clay, uh, you want to make a little side money and come to uh, help unload a." Railroad car, you know, a bunch of alcohol off the train car. Oh, they used to put them on the railroad tracks yeah, and park yeah. them over by where the old town uh -huh. saloon and is. You, they bring yes. them in there and you unload them. I said, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Me and old Marvin Dodd said, hell yeah, we'll come over there. Fuck yeah, make us a little extra money. So uh, that was on Thursday. Okay, <laughs> and we're supposed to be there Saturday morning at 6. Well, Friday shows up, and it's back then days, there was... Bounce, bam, 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 bam. I mean, we were in the 6010 line contest at Cheyenne Calicom. We were partying real. So I rolled into the house about 5.30 that morning, and I am fucked up, still drunk, tired. And I had one of the big old giant water beds. You know, everybody used to have it king-size water bed with the red satin sheets on it and the old bulldog. It'll slide right off that I mean, it bitch. looked like you hit me in the head with a fucking hammer. And when they all, I was, I was down on that 5.30. I was supposed to be at the fucking Guru's plant at 6 o'clock. When all of a sudden, here comes fucking Genghis Khan. Clay, you're supposed to be at the curse plants, Charles, you know. And he sees that I ain't. And I said, shit, I ain't going nowhere, <laughs> motherfucker. You had to move me. I said, like, I'm out. And I said, like, oh, yeah, we're going to move you. You're going to. He got that phone. You're going to the goddamn house. Like, hey, that don't sound like Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like a villain coming out. Hey, and all of a sudden, I'm being drug off that fucking bed by my goddamn ankles. That goddamn gorilla's got me by the fucking ankle. No, I ain't going. I ain't going. I go, oh, yeah, you're going. You look on me, you're going. And that motherfucker drug me. I, I tore the molding off the door faces and shit. <laughs> Throw me in that goddamn shire, turned it on, and that motherfucker drug my ass all the way over there to the Coors plant. And you talk about the worst thing in the world. To, you know, I'm still fucking drunk. Yeah. And oh. I, Bartles and James, a oh. whole fucking train load of Bartles and James. I had to unload that, which it was bad till about noon. Then we was like, fuck, these Bartles and James. <laughs> we drinking that motherfucker. <laughs> but what was funny is old 
Marvin, he was with me. He seen the treatment I was getting. He, I'm up. I'm, I'm up. up. I'm, I'm good. good. I'm good. <laughs> but old Charles, that son of a bitch, he, he, he stayed with me a while. And then when we, he moved back home and figured he'd had all the bullshit he wanted with me. <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, I think when, because somebody kicked in her door and stole my TV, stole my, I got in a fight one night and they kidnapped my brother. I tell you that? No. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, uh, Charles, when we moved him out, we taking the drawers out of them damn deals, and he's tight ass. That somebody wouldn't spend a dollar, and that's some gun. I looked, pulled one of them drawers out, and taped on the back of one of them damn drawers was a fucking check, one of his checks from certain team for like eight hundred bucks. And I go, the hell is this? Oh, that's money I hid. Well, fuck. Let's go spend it. He goes, oh no no no. I said, God damn. I thought I found eight hundred bucks. No, one one time when we lived in an apartment. Them apartments. Now, where was this part on Fairway? Was this by yeah. the Pentecostal Church right there, where oh, the old convalescent Fairview center? Park. Uh, as soon as you head, like you're going to J.C. Park. Okay. You remember J.C. Oh, Park? Oh, okay. I know right where it's down at. The left. Yes, you I know, know. I know. There's one way in. Jerry Hastings lived over there for a while. Hell, there was only five of us that lived. In Jer this. Jerry lived over there they too. Them these apartments. The old Dairy Queen. You turn left right past old Dairy Queen. Right, right past um, that. Yeah. So you go. You go down there. Well, there's one way into them apartments, one way out of them apartments. So there's only five people that lived in these apartments because they had condemned them, and they were going to have to redo the whole summit. So if your lease rolled up, you was out. Right. I didn't have a lease. I was fucking the, uh, the manager and her daughter, and I had a girl, some, some <laughs> kind of a girlfriend, but which was kind of a trick. But uh, anyway, one night we had a big-ass party because we could do whatever we want. There ain't but five motherfuckers in the whole deal, and three of them live right over there next to us. So we had a big ass party, and all of a sudden, here comes this car, comes driving through there real slow, the car full of dudes, you know. And all of a sudden, they said, "Pussy!" Well, that's all it took for Johnny Clay, because I knew that they were going to have to go out this way. So they come, so I hauled ass across that goddamn park. And I didn't tolerate none of that, and I picked up a brick on the way out. <laughs> so anyway, I. I I go. I run out there and I stand in the middle of the road and they gas it. They're gonna try to run me over. And right before they run me over, went to run me over. I throw that brick through their window, try to get them stop. And well, they didn't stop. But they did go through the window and I jumped out of the way and they left. <laughs> I thought that was it. Well, next day I worked at Zeno's Pizza. I go to Zeno's and I'm over there working. And then, and then later that afternoon, my fucking brother comes running in there half dressed. What the fuck did you do last night? We mean my brother didn't live there, but he stayed stay there. You remember Stacy Lawrence? He, mm -hmm. he basically lived with her. And he come over there one day, and, and he said he was laying on the couch, and he didn't have nothing but his underwear. And all of a sudden, somebody kicked in the fucking door, and it's like twelve dudes, and they got baseball bats, they got fucking knives, and more Rambo knives, and all this, and they kidnapped my brother. And they take my stereo, and they take my TV, and they haul Lance. Lance going, what the fuck are y'all doing? <laughs> he was like, you don't know anything that went on the night before. He's oblivious to anything. So they take him down there to the, and you know full well the guy that I'm, I'm telling. <clears throat> it, I'll tell you later. But anyway, we go down there to their house, and they wind up. They got my brother and all these guys in front of their dad. You motherfucker! That, and they got a pit bull dog. He said, you the motherfucker that. Uh, Busted the window out of my dog. Are they taking him to Dog Patch? No, no. It's okay, my, it's not like some my, Dog Patch boys. No, it's, this ain't very far from where I live. Is where they took him, and so they take him over there, and they go, uh, uh, "You'd want to throw this." He says, "I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about." And they were like, "Oh bullshit, you're the one. He's the one, Daddy. He's the one, Daddy." So finally, they said, "Whoop his ass." When they said, "Whoop his ass," and Lance is still in his underwear, so Lance. He fucking hauls out the screen door. They turn the goddamn pit bulldog Shit. loose, and the pit the old bulldog chain, and he's hopping them fucking chain link fences all the way down fairway. He was going from one area to get him, and he finally got the house come over and go to me. And uh, yeah, still in his underwear. Yeah, he, <laughs> didn't and he stop don't have clothes. Oh, it fucking pissed me off, my god! And it took me about three years, but I stomped the dog piss out of every one of them except for the the one that it. It was his sister's car that I did it to. But I gave him a choking at the Red River Rodeo. But by then, the, it was three years later, and the new was wore off. So these are <laughs> these are rider boys then. Uh, they're a little everywhere, but 
But that motherfucker, that first son of a bitch, it was funny as shit because word got out that Clay was going to whoop fuck out of that motherfucker stole my TV and my little brother. And uh, <laughs> it's so my little brother. I was in Color Tile parking lot and I seen that first motherfucker and he seen me coming. Hey, Clay, man, I didn't do nothing. I said, I said, uh, anyway, he said, I'm not fighting you. I said, I don't give a fuck. I said, I tell you, I said, you motherfuckers come up and I tell him and I said, I tell you what, I said, I won't whoop your ass if you'll give me a kiss. And he goes, what? I ain't fucking kissing you. Pow! Boy, I broke his nose. <laughs> and he fell backwards over that car, and he come back, and I said, all right, you better give me a kiss on the cheek right here. I ain't for <laughs> I hit that motherfucker again. And all of a sudden, he goes, because I'm in the parking lot full of fucking people. And he goes, he kissed me, you queer motherfucker, and I popped his ass again and knocked his ass out. It's <laughs> driving me crazy trying to figure out who the fuck this would have been. Because it had to be in Ryder, guys. Huh? It had to be Ryder people in that neighborhood. Well, they're kind of like a mix. <clears throat> yeah, some of them was and some of them wasn't, but. I'm assuming I know these guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> Stole no, my TV and my little brother. Old, a lot of them old Kemp boys are dying left and right. Oh, I know it. Every day. I was friends with Tony Madsen. Do you remember him? Big Tony? Uh, big, big guy. He passed away. I saw just about it. Well, it's been a while back, but he was a really nice guy. He used to drive that. Uh, I think he had the blue Ford pickup that had live wire road on the side of it. Dude, I can't remember I can't, what I have for breakfast. There's so many of them guys. But yeah, but they are. I hell, I lost one of my good buddies, old Scott uh, Chun, here a while back. And hell, I seen him in September. Hell, he's fine. And then all of a sudden, he died. But let me tell you what, my class. the Cowboys out here in the, in the within the area, the 100-mile circle, Yeah, the younger Cowboy guys, they took a, they, a lot of them guys died in freak accidents this last year. Two or three young kids that 25, 26 years oh, old. Oh, yeah, just, my buddy, old Jackson. Old Jackson Taylor. That was a good motherfucker. He 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 got bucked off up and then uh I remember Mexico that one. Got bucked yeah. off. Hell he won the bronc ride, but he got bucked off and landed on his head and broke his neck. Killed him and that that son of a gun was good. He helped he just got done helping me bring kids and all that and then all the boy over at uh Henrietta. Was, yeah, was, didn't a kid get killed at the Stanford Rodeo this year? Or was that last the year before? Uh, shit, I think one of the bull riders. I don't uh, remember that. But yeah, another one got his head stepped on. Yeah, Henry had a boy. Yeah, it's been a bad year. It's a bad year every year for fucking cowboys. I mean, yeah, they talk about that crab fishing bullshit. Well, fuck, they ain't got shit on goddamn cowboy. <laughs> it's a dying, I died three times yesterday. That ain't no bullshit. It's a dying sport. How old are you now? Uh, 57. How many more years are you going to cowboy, you think, till you die? A cowboy will have to work till lunch on the day he dies. So that, so that. Yeah, we were talking about retirement. The only retirement a, a cowboy gets is a fucking forty four Magnum. Yeah, that's kind of what the being a hunting outfitter too. I have people all my and now I'm jealous. All my friends that had jobs that are boring to me because most yeah. jobs are boring. Yeah, they're all fucking and living. they're all retiring. I got a couple of my buddies of mine that are police officers and they're both retiring. Like, oh, yeah, I do this, Jeff. You know, I'm gonna go play golf with some of them in a couple of weeks. But I was like, oh, it's just. It's, I wish I would have been doing that, you know, and they're getting a check and staying home and getting old. New but, Mexico, get but the pill. I don't understand the, I just, I wish I would have lived that deal, but I'll never retire. I like what I do anyways. If I was retired, I'd want to do what I'm doing. If I retired yeah. from another job, I'd want to do what I do. But <clears throat> we're at the age now, a lot of our friends are retiring. I know. It. And that, and I just, I just, that's weird to think of that. Yeah, it fucking pisses me off. Fifteen years I'm out there getting run over Fif by fucking cows. Still, fifteen years will be in our seventies. That's hey, you don't have to remind me. I'm fucking. <laughs> That's yeah. hard to think about though. Though it's really hard to think because remember when you you're fifty seven now. You're fifty seven year old cowboy. Do you remember when you were twenty two? What you thought about that old fifty seven year old cowboy over there? That old yeah. motherfucker's busted up, old man. Oh, old yeah. busted up motherfucker. Yeah. Hell yeah, Tell I used to me. think sixty was in the grave. Yes. Now, now here I am, fucking damn near sixty and going. It ain't so bad. Yeah. <laughs> but that's true, though. Get up. Yeah. I'm still fucking. Uh, as long as a man can still fuck. I mean, hell, he's, that's he's the barometer. Good. Hell, yeah. That's the. That's the. And a good shit. That's the, that's the bare minimum. If I can just keep fucking, I'm good. Yeah. When you. When that old dick quicks working, then, then you're ready. To you think Willie Nelson's still laying the pipe? I don't know. It all depends on if the blue pills are still working. How old's Willie? About 90 now? Fuck yeah. That's a miss. He was old when we were in fucking high school. Yeah, I know it. And he's old now. Older, 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 older. I ain't got no use that motherfucker. 90. Though. He's 90. He's 90 years old. I'm not a big Willie Nelson fan either, but it's hard to believe that at 90 years old, he's still going. Yeah, but them drugs will kill you. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Him and that Sammy dope. Hagar. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Look at all the old rock and roll guys. I know, and all them motherfuckers. They're, that, um, hell, they're Steven in, Tyler? They're self-embalmed. Yeah. yeah. You can't fucking kill them, some bitches. He's 90 years old? Yeah. I wonder how old Mick Jagger's got to be getting close to 80. And that's just that's just crazy to think of. I'm not a Rolling Stones fan. Never have been a Rolling yeah. Stones group. You know, I love Van Halen, but I'm not a Rolling Stones guy. But he'll Sammy Hagar's 75 Mick years Jagger's old. Jagger's 80. He's 80 years old. Well, he looks and like shit. He's always looked like shit. Even when he was young, he looked like that's shit. That's the good thing about me. I started out looking like <laughs> shit, and I'm finishing looking yeah. like shit. So you don't even know the difference. You're holding hell, steady. He still looks young. <laughs> yeah, holding steady. Yeah. Have you seen uh, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson are going to fight? Oh, that's... Yeah, but if you Mike seen, Tyson's your age. Have you seen the rules to that? I you saw, see what Mike Tyson said. He can tag his brother in. I saw uh, that. I wonder. Uh, I wonder how much of that he can. He's he, going to be able to wear headgear. Mike's not. Uh, I hope Mike, that's not true. Did you hear what Mike Tyson said? No. He said, "I'm going to put that motherfucker to sleep." Really? That's exactly what he said. He said, "I'm telling you right now, I'm going to do what's good for boxing, and I'm going to end this shit. And that son bitch is going to be in the WWE when I get done with him." Well, that's pretty much what it is already. <laughs> yeah, he's because if Tyson hits him, I saw Tyson working out the video oh, yeah, of him. He's still he killed that son vicious. of a bitch. Yeah, he's a vicious son of a bitch. It wouldn't be fair for Mike Tyson to fight somebody our age. Oh hell no, hell no. Here's Mike Tyson on day two. Getting ready for you. <laughs> Getting ready for you. <laughs> Fifty-seven. Right. Yeah. Have you seen him hit that sparring partner a couple times? Uh-uh. Oh yeah, he he's got. <laughs> he got like two yeah, he, his ass up. The other day he got lit up. I mean, busted his fucking lips all the fucking hell. That's a that's a lot of man right there to have to fight, Mike. Ooh. Is he he get rid of his face tattoo, didn't he? No, it's just faded. Have no, you seen there. Have you seen all the fucking competition in the heavyweight division right now? He could win the heavyweight division. Tell me a heavyweight right now in the heavyweight. The big, the Tyson romantic. Fury? Yeah, that guy. The no, Tyson. that's the white guy. Isn't it, or is that the black guy? Tyson. See? Tyson is that, that tells uh, the you white the state guy. Of the boxing. the gypsy you? guy from England is pretty pretty legit. But that's it. The one that sings afterwards. What's the black guy's name from Mobile, Alabama that it fought? He had a pretty good fight against. That's the other guy. And I don't even can't, I can't think of his name. Tyson Fury. I can't remember the other guy. Oh, Deontay Wilder. That's it. That's the only two guys that I've even heard of. You yeah, could tell me uh, JoJo uh, Flanagan. Oh, I wouldn't have a fucking exactly. clue. Exactly. Yeah. They, Boxing's not what it used to be when we no. grew up. I mean, there's no Sugar Ray Leonard's. There's no Marvin Hagler's. Uh, there's no Roberto Duran's. Fucking wars, man. Them was uh, Hagler. Yeah. I mean, those were fights. I oh, mean, I remember we were at when my, the first time I really watched Mike Tyson fight. We was over at uh, Andy Boyd's house, and it was probably we were probably eighteen nineteen, and we bought it on pay per view. We all threw in ten bucks or five, and we watched it. And Mike Tyson whooped George Foreman like in fit, or Frazier, one of them, in like two seconds. You know, it was yeah. first or second round, and it's like a little sawed off some bitch could fight, and he was just mean as hell. Black trunks, black shoes, and a tooth missing, and just whooped everybody's ass, and he. He's scary. He's yeah. intimidating as hell. Here's a video of him fighting. Do you remember Tommy Morrison, John Wayne's nephew, that fought oh, yeah. used to fight? I don't remember this one, but I mean, just fucking ferocious. Oh, just a mean son That's of Michael a Spinks, I think. Liver shot. Ooh. I tell you what, people don't even understand how bad that fucking kidney fight is. Oh. Like, oh, right there. Uh, just chopping him down. Mm. That, that, that hurts. hurts. Oh, damn, it hurt. That's tough, and, some bitch. He's fighting. Well, I mean, it doesn't look like you can hurt Tyson either. Like he's taking shots right there, but he's just standing and fucking grinning. Mm. Oh, Jake Paul ain't getting this, but yeah, I guarantee I'm gonna, you, uh, Jerry for you. Uh. Uh-uh. Jerry Quarry fought uh, Muhammad Ali back in the day. Uh-huh. That one knocked his mouth. And uh, out. he's white boy and old Jerry Quarry. Matter of fact, Jerry Cooney. Uh, Quarry. Uh, Jerry Cooney. No, Jerry Cooney's the uh, uh, that big white. No, this is uh, uh, this is the guy that they got off of. Uh, that's how they got Rocky. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, he. Uh, before he fights him, of course, he's a white guy. Oh, they had a guy. movie about this guy, not yeah. Rocky. They had another movie about yeah. this guy. Anyway, before he fought him, he, he went and bought his old lady a purple 
uh, Teddy, you know, Teddy, he said, you be, and give it to her at the hotel. He said, you be wearing this when I get back because you're going to be sleeping with the fucking champ. <laughs> and he says, all right. So he goes up there and of course, Ollie whoops his ass. So he goes, this is with his mother and actually knocks Ollie down. And, uh, he, he come back in, kicked in the door at the deal. She's sitting there in that purple Teddy. She goes, When's he gonna get here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look it up. I think it's yeah. uh, Jerry Quarry or. Uh, Do you think that Mike Tyson in his prime could have beat the Ollie? Bayon Bleeder is what the, he was. The, the Bayon B A Y O N E. The Bayon Bleeder. Do you th Do you think he could? I, I think I think Mike Tyson in his prime would have whooped Ali. Would have whooped Ali? I think Chuck so. Wetner. Yeah, Chuck, that's it. Is. Chuck, you Wagner? don't think it would have been close? You yeah. think Ali would have killed Tyson? I he'd have killed him. I don't know about that. Even Tyson says the same. Well, yeah, because that's just called respect and stuff. But I just don't think anybody was Ali was a, a, a different cut. He, he, you know, because he was like athlete. When, when Sonny Liston was fucking, he was the that their age, uh, Mike Tyson. I mean, he killed fucking people, and goddamn Ali made him look like a stepchild. You, you know, Ali's from where the Boss Boys are he at, was and so they all fucking fast. And um, a kid I know that's. A, that does some stuff with Boston. Awesome. He was friends with Ollie's family because he he just lived in right. the neighborhood and stuff. But Ollie was a, I mean, there was no, he was a tall, big, he was a lot taller, little thinner guy. But I, I don't know. I think that, I think Tyson in his prime before prison and stuff and just when he was vicious and mean, I think he could have beat anybody at the time. I really do. I don't know. Ollie's just so much bigger. He and was he, bigger. And he was so much faster. Yeah. That fucking reach, uh, you know, Tyson's a hooker. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets on you hooking, but Ali's a mover. I mean, his head fucking movement were unmatched. Who beat anybody. Ali? Frazier? Uh, Foreman? I mean, we're talking about the but, but we're talking about the prime to prime. Right, I know that, that's mean, what I'm know, saying. 70s wasn't the prime for Ali, you know, when he was getting when big. he was when he was still in uh, the 60s. That motherfucker wasn't no when he was big. Cassius Clay, still. yeah, when he was 56 Cassius. and five, yeah. So, when when was I, his first loss? Which he lost I'll to look it up. Holmes. He lost to Frazier. He lost to... Uh, Did, didn't Foreman beat him? Uh, no. No. Foreman got beat. Right hand lead, left hook. That was the thriller in Manila. Yeah. Uh, that was all... I thought that was... another one. I thought that know, was Frazier in uh, Manila. Uh, he was killing. I mean, he had three losses in his last four fights, basically. Yeah, exactly. After so, he was Leon Spinks, the ugliest guy to ever box. Yeah. So you go down. He lost to Ken Norton in '73, and he was 31 years of age. He lost yeah, to Ken, Joe Frazier. Ken so there's his there's his five losses right there. Joe Frazier and Ken Norton. Ken Norton broke his jaw, and that's why he got beat. So basically, in his prime, he lost two fights. I mean, even if you can consider Look, it that Tyson didn't even lose a fight until he was after his after he's out of. So Joe Frazier at 29 years old. Yeah, but that's in 71 before he got his first and then loss. 31. Yeah, yeah. When he had, did he start he fighting? Had he had 31 wins before he ever suffered a loss. Yeah. He didn't get a loss till he was 31. Look at Tyson now. And Joe Frazier was a fucking bad cat, too. I yeah. mean, you just couldn't hurt Joe. Now, that Ken Norton, that's Ken, That's the football player's Daddy. dad, isn't yeah. it? That's his dad. Yeah, and he, like I say, he broke, broke Ollie's jaw. And he, and he finished the fucking fight with a broke fucking jaw. There was a guy in the UFC fight. He got his skull fractured and went all five rounds. Here's the uh, here's the knee. Fractures right here in between his eyes. Right here. Boop. Damn. But here's the x-ray. Woo. Don't you know that was a little sore? Could you imagine? And then going on and fighting. I don't know what round that happened in, but uh, Jesus, just a lucky to be alive. Yeah. So who am I looking up? Um, oh, Mike Tyson's record. Well, I know when he got beat. <laughs> Buster Douglas, fifty-six and six. Yeah, that'd be the first one, wouldn't it? Uh huh. How old was he? Yeah, because I was so mad. We were watching his apartments, and I went down there to get a Slurpee at 7-Eleven because I thought it was going to be an over fight, you know. And then I come back, and everybody's going ape shit, and I missed him getting his ass knocked out. That was in Tokyo, uh -huh. wasn't it? Did you just pull up Tyson's deal? I'm looking. I'm trying to get to the – yeah, Buster when Douglas. He, when and Ali beat George Foreman, you know, that George Foreman was the 70s Tyson, and there's no way he's going to beat him. 
but he fucking mind fucked him to no end. Ali Mumbai, Ali Mumbai. He had the hope when George Foreman got off the plane, he had these uh, German shepherds escorting him out off there. Well, German shepherds uh, over there in Africa, you know, they were that immediate. You know, that's what the people were. Uh, you know, what the uh, white man used mm -hmm. to sick on them, and uh, so immediately they hated him. But then Ali, they started chanting, you know, Ali, he went through the crowd, I mean, through the town and done all this, and he got the town. Uh, he was a showman. He got them all on his, uh, I did, let's say thrill. No, Th no, it wasn't thrill in Manila. That's, it was, that was uh, Frazier there. It was uh, Rumble in the Jungle. Right. Yeah, Rumble in the Jungle because he was over in Africa. But then that's when they started chanting, Ali, Mumbai. But that's when he did the old rope and dope method. Mm -hmm. and, but he also... If you're a left-handed, a right-handed fighter, I mean, you always lead with your left, and it, and for you to lead with your right is, I mean, it's like saying, "Hey, motherfucker, you're slow." Right. Well, that's how he beat him and got into his head. He would right hand lead, left hook him. Right hand lead, left hook him. <laughs> right hand lead, left hook, and it was pissing fucking him off. And then he'd get up on the rope and open. He just let him beat. He got him so fucking furious that he punched himself out. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, okay, we Here got this mother. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Here comes all. Yeah. Eight. So <clears throat> Tyson was 23 years old when he had his first loss, and he was 37 and 0. I mean, he's a bad motherfucker. There's no doubt about it. Oh yeah, without a doubt. But he well, also his started. His problem was off the, off the, out of the. You know, he just, was 18 but, his first but fight. By the time he got into the boxing scene, the fucking it, it's kind of like boxing today. There was no fucking boxers. There was a bunch of fucking chumps. Right. I mean, he fought Larry Holmes, you know, and and that was when he was like nine thousand years old. But by the time, I, I mean, not taking anything away from. Uh, him, but you look on there and go, huh? Well, now, there's a bunch of fucking scrubs on there. Uh, yeah, go down the list, go up the list. The first fighter he fights that's any good was Trevor Burbick. That's the first real fight right here. He had it 28 0. Was Trevor you Burbick. won the heavyweight title right there? Well, against Burbick, okay, yeah. that was his first. Hit. Then everybody else he fought was just guys they were trying to get there. Wasn't a lot of big because all the big back then, all the good fighters were in the um, Sugar Ray Leonard and all them, Marvin yeah, Hagler did. and. Yeah, they're just, Roberto Duran. Yeah, but you go down in the seventies and sixties and, and see who Ali fought. Yeah, they were fucking. I mean, hungry, bad. You know, fucking. I mean, some badass. They don't have boxing like they yeah, did exactly. back then. Exactly during them seventies, that was the that was the all end. the military yeah. guys were fighters. They all the ever ship. Had their own boxing champion, yeah. and they would, you know, during World War II and Korean War, they would go fight another. You know, we had a guy in Knox City that used to live here. He was one of the Army champions. Did you know that mm -hmm. Marvin Jones? Yeah, and, and so was what's his name was also a fighter. Bud that owned the cafe in town. Yeah, Bud had some meat ha meat hooks for hands like my dad did. Been fucking broken forever. Yeah, and he because he but he was a boxer growing up. They but it's not politically correct to box now. Does Wichita Falls? I remember going to watch you fought in it. Tony fought in it in the Tough Man contest and the um, with the open sports or all sports division that saved Golden Gloves in Wichita Falls because more people wanted to go watch well, the high school the, boys. That was the Golden Gloves, right? I mean, but but then it the, went to the football deal, so they bring the football players yeah, in. People helped. wanted to watch it because yeah, people watched helped. it. But do they even have the Golden Gloves in Wichita Falls anymore? Uh, no, they moved it to Lubbock. Uh, it used to be the regional tournament. Now they have it in Lubbock. But Lubbock had one, and Wichita had one, yeah. and Lawton had one, and all yeah. of them. And they now just combined it. Yeah. There's just not that many kids box. Yeah. Where do you box at? Southeast Boys Club. The only they got good boxing clubs over in Wichita now. They still do then. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That they have uh, that W. Uh, oh, what's that place? There, there's like three, four clubs over there now, and they've they've got some really good boxers. I had a, I graduated with a kid that was a good boxer, Gilbert Contreras. Oh yeah. And then, um, and Gilbert, me went to elementary. He's a good kid, but he yeah. was a boxer. And it's funny too. He's a fighter. I don't remember him ever starting a fight with anybody in his whole oh, life. Oh yeah, never yeah, ever right. bothered nobody. And then what was the Ayala boys? Is that their last name? Yeah. And then you had the Reyes. You the had Reyes, Ruben yes. Navarez. I mean, Chris Hamilton. I mean, that that's when I was boxing. You know, there was some good. Chris boxers. never, ever, ever, ever started a thing my whole life that I remember him ever. Great guy. Went to high school with him. Good friend. Never remember Chris Hamilton. Never start anything with anybody. But oh, I wouldn't no. want to. Fuck I would not no. want to have to get in a boxing oh, ring with no. his that ass. Motherfucker as good as some bitches there was. Sammy and Beatty, he, and he was good. Sammy. Sammy, good friend of mine. Yeah. And I never seen Sammy. But those guys never ever started anything. Uh, I never seen them ever uh, squabble with anybody. 
Yeah, and really, uh, Barney, Bobby, all them Reyes boys, they were all good guys. Uh, Do you remember the old drunk guy that was the old Mexican guy that used to Pat throw fight? Yeah. What was his name? Pat Duran. I went. Yeah, as, he was. He was my brother. Uh, sent me a picture of him. They were at the casino the other day. He's still alive. <laughs> you goddamn right. How old is he? And, now? Uh, he's probably a little older than me. Oh, he's Dude. older than you by a little bit. He's got to be sixty-five. I don't think he's that old. We said, we said, he's wrong with us all everywhere. I mean, was, wherever I, I guarantee you this one thing about it, if I was in a, pie, uh, a fight, Pat Duran was anywhere around, he was right there beside me. Really? That son of a bitch, he'd roll that goddamn uh, belt. Yes. And that belt bucket well, okay, let's go. We call him champ. We still call him champ. <laughs> yeah, old Pat Duran. Yeah. Yeah, Have you never, ever been hit with brass knuckles? Huh? Have you ever been hit with brass knuckles? Hell no. Never? Uh, no. My teeth are fucked up, but not because of brass knuckles. <laughs> if somebody had brass knuckles, I'm getting the fuck out. Well, I didn't know if anybody ever like cheap no, shotted you or anything. No, slipped them out of their pocket. I don't even think I remember ever even seeing anybody with any. I don't think I ever did. Do you remember them fucking Chinese stars that people had all oh, the time? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Throwing oh, stars? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, and nunchucks. Yeah. I knocked myself out with some nunchucks I one time, boy. Myself God, out. I lost my goddamn eye open one time with a fucking thing. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That was, like, God. I, when I got kicked out of high school, that's what I was selling, that 38, high, uh, 38 revolver and two pairs of nunchucks, nunchucks. in art class. <laughs> Have yeah. you ever seen nunchucks yeah. and well, like, I mean, in person? And I no. can do nunchucks pretty good. My cousin, <laughs> Dave and Bell, now, that motherfucker, he'd get two of them so much more. And then I, I was in there, and I, I, I went from my crotch area, and he go right to here, and I was drinking a little bit. <laughs> went a little low, come back up, and I said, beep! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hit myself across the jaw one time with some. God damn, hit myself in the balls. But I'm telling you, you hurt yourself with them things. Especially when you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And oh, I didn't yeah. know what I was doing. But you watch fucking a Chinese movie, whoa, 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 and you try to do that shit, and mm, it's not as yeah, easy that, as it looks. Those are like party favors, because we break out our nunchucks when everybody get drunk, <laughs> and I guarantee you somebody's going to get KO'd. <laughs> oh, man, that motherfucker, I do what I want. You know, one of the funniest things I saw it here is we used to have a coach lived across the street from her husband, real cowboy, and you know him, probably Steve Elliott. Do you ever know Steve? Oh, yeah. I know Steve and them had some bull whips and they busted out. <laughs> yeah. And our basketball, girls basketball coach went, <laughs> he hit himself right above the fucking eye God, with that fucking man. bull whip. Oh, you remember man. that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he slashed his fucking, whoop pow Mm. You also another, not- a bull whip's another fucking thing you can fuck somebody up with. You and you can also hurt yourself. Yeah. You also knocked yourself, or did you knock yourself out the last beer bottle you tried to break over your head? Nope. It just jabbed you? It just jabbed in. I went over to Burger King and got a, <laughs> yeah, to get this car right there. <laughs> got that fight. Throw me a beer. They throw me that fucking beer. <laughs> and uh, like I say, usually hit it on the side and it don't do nothing because I've broken me and them over my head. They used to give me a 12 pack every time I'd break one over my head. And I was poor and I liked beer at the time. But that night, like I say, I got in a fight with a guy, and after I finally got him whooped, I just shoved it in there. And I mean, just crushed it. Oh. And I said, throw me another one. I never even knew it. And they threw me another, and I'm drinking it. And old Gary McDonald goes, hang on a sec. You got something stick, sticking out of your head? I said, well, pull the motherfucker out. And old Gary, he pulled that motherfucker out. And every time my heart beat, it would go, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> And I had a. A white beater shirt, white tank top, and bugle boy shorts, and Reebok tennis shoes. And they, God damn, we got to get you to hospital. No, I'm hungry. Let's go to Burger King. I walked over to Burger King, fucking drenched in blood. I said, I want to meet you, Burger King. Fr- Sir, you got a hole in your head. And said, yeah, I, I want French fries. Make it large, too. Yeah. Do you, uh, you made me think. Of I've something. never busted oh, a beer bottle. Have you seen head. the video of the black guy that's going to do it for twenty bucks? <laughs> yeah. Can you find that, Andy? That's the best. <laughs> he does, he does it for like twenty. If he's oh, laughing, God, <laughs> everybody. I would throw twenty bucks to watch somebody he do that. He was not committed. <laughs> you, if you're going to bust a beer bottle over your head, you got to be committed. <laughs> you ought to. You ought to see this. Uh, after we filmed that movie, Texasville. Mm-hmm. Uh, Timothy Bottoms and Sam Bottoms and Jeff Bridgers and all them, they paid me $100 to come over there and sit in the backyard and do basically what I'm doing right now. Sit in the backyard and they filmed filmed it. And on the end, they got a documentary, The Making of Texasville. And at the end of the, in in the middle, in that deal, it has an interview of me talking 
about, about this story about busting a beer bottle over my head. Got paid a hundred dollars. <laughs> you know, my dad was in the first one, uh, the last picture show. Yeah. Him and Cloris Leachman were in a vehicle and he was smoking a cigarette and she's like, I don't like cigarette smoke. He said, well, fucking stand outside. That's what he told her. Oh, that fucking civil sheriff. You talk about a special cunt. Yeah. My dad said the same thing about that. Oh, this yeah, is great. Is it. Do you got the motherfucker? Toy Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I saw her to save him a while uh, I already showed you my wallet. <laughs> you ain't got to be committed, man. You ain't committed. I bet that bitch bust this time. He's still shaking it up. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Oh, fuck. Oh, 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 I don't think I want to, because I'd be like that guy. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be committed. You'd be, fucking give oh, myself a headache. A wine bottle probably break easier than a beer bottle. Beer bottle's too small. Clay's done it. Well, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying a wine bottle probably as long as it is, you probably got a little more when, chance. When you get an alcohol, I'll give you a hundred dollar bill if you do one on camera right now. Right now. Right now, hundred dollar bill. No. Don't. <laughs> Don't because two hundred dollars. I, I have pushed my luck way too much in my life. Remember when you said you're not in third grade anymore and you That's can't be exactly goaded right. into shit? I ain't in third grade. You can call me a coward. You can piss me. Big old pussy. <laughs> you big old pussy. Okay. Yeah, don't he ain't got nothing to prove. Way. Hell no. I don't. Know you know who? Way. You know who tried? Austin I, Valamont. Oh yeah. Yeah, because he's that age. Yes. Now. Yeah, but. I am not in third grade no more. I was, he, he's close to he's closer to me in third grade than I am. I watched him get uh sprayed with pepper spray one time. He wanted to get tased. And this was my front yard, and Harry was our police chief then. He was at the house and Austin was over there with Zach and he's like, Harry, will you tase me? And Harry's like, Well, he's kinda of looking at me. I'm like, No, I'm fucking mayor. Do not do this shit at my house, especially and don't. We're liable if something fucking happens. You cannot do this shit. Come on, just do it. I've always wanted to be tased. Trust me, Austin. In your lifetime, you will probably have that opportunity, but we're not in my front yard. Well, pepper spray me then. Harry looked at me and I was like, I don't give a shit if you pepper spray him. If he's dumb enough to do that shit, fucking Harry hit him in the fucking eyeballs with that shit. <gasps> and then he goes, Miss Stanfield, can I go take a shower? See, then got in the shower and got that shit all down his balls oh, and shit. Oh, God. <laughs> he come man. out fucking red. <laughs> it's going to be all over God. him. I laugh so hard. Does yeah, that, does that surprise you? Third grade, but we're still having switch fights at my <laughs> <Yeah>. house. <laughs> but are you surprised? Because you know Austin that oh, he did yeah. this. That no, no, it does not surprise He might try the bottle trick. Yeah. You know his. We his, may have to get him on here next time. <laughs> you know his, his mom and dad are deaf. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, um, have you ever seen him talk like a deaf person? Uh-uh. The, the boy, they were playing baseball in Hamlin one time, and they went into Subway to get a sandwich and shit, and he was uh, 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 pointing at shit, and they all started laughing at him, and the lady got mad and told the coaches on him, they're making fun of that deaf boy, you know, and he was just uh, 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 ordering shit. I was in Walmart the other day, and there was a deaf person in there, and she was with people. Well, I guess she got away from them, and they were like, <laughs> trying to... She just kept on walking down the aisle. She had to haul ass to get in front of her, like, oh, I, no more, no, don't, don't go. Any, we're back here. I used to be the king of, of uh, you know, I, prime example. When we were in high school, we're playing Vernon. We're going to after the ball game. We go into K Bob's. You remember K Bob's mm -hmm. used to be over there. We go to K Bob. Well, when we're going in there, I go into full retard mode. You know. <laughs> I'm dragging a leg and I'm, I'm <laughs> going in there. And I, the whole time I'm in character. And uh, and before, after we get done eating, I crawl underneath the table over there and I fall asleep. I acted like I'm sleeping. And them waitresses never said a fucking word to me. <laughs> and then when it got up, I said, go home, boy. You did go home. And so we go home. We're headed to leave and that waitress. That's so nice. Y'all to have that boy on team and on boxing. <laughs> that motherfucker ain't retarded. He's retarded, all right, but not. 
<laughs> yeah, and old a uh, friend of mine, Melanie, she used to work in the butcher shop at the United over on Jacksboro Highway, mm-hmm. you know, which is right in San As soon as I come walking in the door, hey, man, uh, <laughs> you son of a bitch, she go to running from me. <laughs> oh, man, don't want for me. <laughs> Yeah. It makes everybody else uncomfortable is what's fake. Oh, great. yeah, I love it. I love making money. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all something. If you ever go into Nevada, you got to, I, you know, I was telling him earlier, I, before I, I did not want to forget to tell this story. I hunted a Nevada shotgun shootout, shotgun only coyote hunt back in, I think, November or something like that. But anyway, we stayed in a. I ain't gonna tell you. I'll, I'll tell you the town later. But <laughs> well, anyway, we stayed in this this hotel, and uh, <laughs> my guess got text. My wife's got four grandkids in the Dollar General. Oof. Oh Lord Jesus! Poor mom. Go ahead. Uh, so anyway, we're in this. Uh, every night, the the hotel we stay <clears throat> in's got a uh, 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 casino in it. You know, it's a little old small town, northern Wendover. Uh, no, it's in Nevada, not Utah. That's in, Wendover's in Nevada. No, you got two of them. Yeah, there's Wendover, Nevada. Well, you said Wendover. Wendover is in Nevada. West Wendover is in okay. Nevada. All right. I'm and just so, trying to think of where you're at. Yeah. So, I'm in Northern Nevada. I'm not going to say, that, but anyway, they. Uh, so we're staying in this hotel, right? Well, it's got a deal. Well, I don't ever sleep. So midnight, I go run my three miles around town, and then I come in and deal. You know, me and the guy working the door and. And uh, the bartender sat there. There wasn't nobody in this little, little casino deal. Anyway, I'm sitting there, and we're drinking beer or, or drinking coffee. And all of a sudden, the finest motherfucking gal in North America walks in this some bitch. Little blonde headed girl. She's 25 years old. Working girl? She, she got blue jeans on, cowboy boots. I mean, I mean, beautiful. She goes in there, goes to bullshitting with us. And anyway, I said, uh, what the hell are you? Because. By this time, it's Saturday morning. And I said, what the hell are you doing out this time of night? So oh, I just got off work. I said, oh, yeah. She, I said, I work next door. Uh, she goes, I work at the brothel next door. And I said, oh. I said, there's a whorehouse here? And she goes, we, we don't call them whorehouses in Nevada. We call them brothels. And I said, well, I'm from Texas. And we call whorehouse. them whorehouses. And they are awesome. And then I was like. Are you like the door girl, or are you like? Because she did not. A greeter look, or the meter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you like one of the girls? She goes, "No, I'm one of the girls." And I said, and, and immediately in my mind, I'm trying to figure out how much money I got. My <laughs> well, this is so much fun. She just got and, off. And, you don't want that. Yeah, you you want to be early in the day. Yeah. And so anyway, I was like, "No shit." And I said, "Man, I said, how much you, how much you make over there?" And she goes, "Well." I only work here on Mondays and Fridays, and he said, I'll make about four or five grand. He said, but on Wednesdays, I fly to Vegas, and I'll make double that. Jesus. I said, oh, So she's sh- making 10000 a week. Yeah. 15000 15, 15, Well, if I had one of them motherfuckers, that's what I'd be doing. Well, this son of a bitch is fucking, I mean, she is beautiful, 25 years old. And I said, are you from here? She was born and raised. My family owns a ranch right north of town out here. And I said, no shit. You got any cars on it? do you not, uh, you know, worry about the town folk you know you know doing that in the town she goes fuck them motherfuckers she goes, out that door right there i got the biggest baddest double cab dually that money can buy and i pay fucking cash for it i drive around town going fuck y'all motherfuckers she says, i look your style this big uh, so she's I, making 15 grand kelly, a week kelly you know what they're renting up here uh can i have some and, yeah that wouldn't go so 15 grand and she works three days a week or four fuck yeah what's the math on that in a year jeff Fifteen thousand a week would be seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Actually, it would be seven hundred eighty thousand a year. Damn. Now, my wife didn't make nothing off of hers. Pissed me off. No, Michelle fucking wasted hers. <laughs> seven hundred eighty thousand. Still a year. trying to rent Kelly right now. I didn't matter. Hey, baby, we can, at least an OnlyFans. Goddamn, we put, put a mask on you. You know, shit. Nobody got to know. Hell, I'm just still trying to get a picture of her titties. You know, I got her those new titties. <laughs> and she won't let me take a picture of her. I have tried to sneak up on her and take on sneak and, up on and her. all this. And I can't. It's always a blur because she's <laughs> you know, fighting me. Because I told her, I said, you realize how much money I can make off that set of titties? That's right. Every morning when I go eat breakfast, I can say, who's buying breakfast this morning? <laughs> I'll show you the titties that I had breakfast this morning. So what did... uh? 
<laughs> well, in that book you were reading, yeah, how many? What, what the lady? The ladies. I, I've got I've got a book I've been reading, and I'm about done with it called Brothels and Boudoirs of the Old West, and it's about the hook the the prostitutes' whorehouses and mm-hmm. the girls that worked, and it was a terrible fucking job. But there there was there was no other job for women back then. And anyways, the women would, was it 40 to 50 men a day? Yeah. 40 to 50 men a day they service. Now, the hygiene back then was not good. The girls would put a saddle blanket on their headboards because the guys would not take their boots off and they'd have cow shit and stuff on them. Or they would scra- or footboard. Or they would put uh, marks from their spurs all over it. So they did 40 to 50 guys a day, never had a day off. 350 pokes a week. Is what's and, them old gals. and you're pissing me off because I've still got blondies. <laughs> that's that's today's prostitute yeah, compared yeah. to the one back then. You know that um, what's the chick's name that rode around with uh, White Earp and them? The one that got killed with Doc Holl- or was with Doc oh, Holliday? Those uh, flat nose. No, no, not big nose Kate. Kate. No, um, God dang it! The other lady from that's in Deadwood. The one that cusses all the time. Um, God, what is the fuck is her name? You want to know the name of the actress or the name no, of the, the name lady? of the, the the character that's in Deadwood? The, oh, I didn't watch the real rough looking lady, motherfucker, fuck you, you cunt. Rah, rah, rah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, uh, but like I say, I can't. God remember Almighty! Uh, look look up lady that was with she she was in love with Calamity Jane. Calamity Jane. Calamity Jane had a really big heart, and I'm assuming a big vagina probably because she she sold herself too, and she was not one of the upper echelon type chicks like this blonde was. She worked at the mining camps and the the Chinese slave labor places oh. and stuff, but uh, she would also defend people. She might have whipped your ass, Clay, in your time because she was a rough old bitch. And if she couldn't fight you, she'd shoot you and kill you maybe. But she took up for people that were ha- that had bad. Th- she had a pretty good heart and stuff, but she was really fucked up. But uh, it's interesting. That book was really interesting, especially when you got into the parts of the women that were in charge of these brothels. A lot of those were ladies that turned from high-end type prostitutes to owning the thing, but they'd cut your ass in a heartbeat if they had oh, to. Fuck yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Was, you had to. You couldn't a, put up with any bullshit. It was a tough fucking racket that they played. And um that it's just it's really crazy that whole it that whole time. Be lucky I ain't got no pussy. I'd be one of them 350s. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Did Pay you not- me to do some fucking buying. I'll, I'll show you a track star. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know there- I'd be a world champion whore. <laughs> there, there was a there was a group of women that worked, and it was another book, and I started to buy it. And I want to say Kelly Girls, but I don't think that's the right name. There was a guy that lived in Flagstaff, Arizona, that would bring these women to. They would get off buses and or not buses, trains back then, and they go to work for him in the offices. And they would do, and it wasn't. They weren't all brothel ladies. They would work at restaurants and stuff because these these mining towns and stuff had no women, and they needed ladies to work at certain places. So these guy, these girls from the the, the Northeast would come to wherever Flagstaff, Arizona right. or stuff, and they'd go stay at a hotel somewhere, and there was a name of them, and there was thousands of them. And this guy, that's what he did, was he employed these girls. It's kind of like a Kel- Kelly temporary agency, and he started these women, and I cannot remember the name of them right now. You'd want to be early in the day. You'd want to be like the 8 o'clock appointment. You don't want to be 8 at night. I don't ever fucking sleep, so, man, I'm the perfect fucking <laughs> whore, you know. Yeah, no, I'm talking I, about I, for the guy. You don't want to. You don't oh, want to be yeah, number. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't want to be number be forty or fifty. Back end of that train. How, how, I've been on the back end of that train <laughs> on a, a, a late night rendezvous. What, what do you think that? Uh, how many girls do you think that old gal? How many guys do you think that old gal that you met in Wendover did a day? I don't know. Hell, if you make it four or five grand a week, and I'm probably thinking. What do you think her rates are? A buddy of mine told me it was like three hundred dollars an hour, but I don't know if she 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 may she ain't have working higher. seventeen hours doing that. Yeah. No, that's there's no. Yeah, I bet her rate is because she look and see what rates are at a pr- my brothel. fucking Google search. <laughs> that doesn't Jeff. matter. Look up the rates at the Bunny Ranch. Is, that, is it Bunny Ranch? Is that the name of the one outside of Vegas? It's real famous. Uh, the guy yeah, died. Yeah, the Chicken Ranch. Or, the, yeah, yeah, they got. The see bun- what the rates is. That one buddy of mine, because I, you know, I I stopped there at Area Fifty One Alien Quick Stop in the middle of Death Valley, out there before you get to Tony Paul, Nevada, and uh, two o'clock in the morning, I'm asleep. And then I get up, I'm sleeping in the parking lot. It's a little convenience store. And I get up, I leave, I get gas, and I leave. Well, then I post on Facebook, and I said, well, I stay up to stop the daily and quick stop, you know, da-da. And my old buddy, John, he goes, yeah, what was you doing at the quick stop? <laughs> I was just getting gas and a, and a Red Bull. And he goes, yeah, I'll bet you wasn't. What the fuck are you talking about? 
He said, what's the fucking whorehouse? I said, no, it's a fucking convenience store. He said, them goddamn pink rooms to the side over there. Your buddy been there, huh? And I go, oh, yeah. He said, yeah, I used to work ranch right across there. So I had to quit that motherfucker because I couldn't ever <laughs> save no money. I was going over there. I said, what are they charging? He goes, Three hundred dollars an hour, and I said, "What the hell do you do for the other fifty-five minutes?" Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Y'all read a book or yeah. <laughs> talk politics? Or <laughs> was it Rachel, Nevada? Ain't that the name of the little town? One of the little towns up there is Rachel. This wasn't even a town. I think Rachel, Nevada, is one of the places by area. Area fifty-one. Around five hundred dollars, it can get up to nine hundred dollars an hour. Yeah, I bet. I would think this gal would be. She a thousand dollar an hour chick. Yeah, I, I would think so because she was. Yeah, I can see where. So yeah. she was wife material, even. That oh, good yeah. Looking? This is yeah. some bitch with finer than frog hair. I mean, this is some bitch. Uh, I'd eat the corn out of her shit. <laughs> Drink a gallon of that piss to figure out where it come from. Yeah. Jeez. I'm mad because Kelly wouldn't let me bring her home with me. God dang it. You know, you need a maid. You know, you could have yeah. put her to work. Well, just take the pressure off Kelly Jean, God dang Yeah, it. I mean, stabbing you know. cabin. We got stabbing cabin open down there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, diary of a bunny ranch employee. Thousand dollars. What's the day? Today, fifteenth. Yeah, Friday. You know what happens on Friday, don't you? <clears throat> that's fuck me Friday. Is it? Yeah, because that's the only day we don't have kids at the house. <laughs> so you better get back home pretty quick. You got right. We got <laughs> well, I got Friday. a friend of mine. She's got a. So, well, I can say it now because she's got this one there. She got a surprise birthday party now. Oh. So Frank the Tank may make an appearance now. I got <clears throat> two jars of peach moonshine, specially made from the mountains of Virginia. Speaking of Frank the Tank, walk us through this picture. Hey, I'm gonna tell you that that is when we found out that they were giving free lap dances at uh, uh, Maximus the Strip Club. And, uh, is that a baby in somebody's lap behind yeah, you? Yeah, that is. That, yeah, <laughs> a little that's kid a good, back here. Yeah, and there's one on the floor over here. That's <laughs> Peanut in there, and there's this kid on the floor. The, Who's with the beard in the black and the red and white? Uh, Big Daddy Raymond Wolf, Mongo. Mongo. Uh, yeah, I got my big tough son of a bitch. He's from Winthorpe, right? You got damn right. A good, a good of some guns there is. Who's dancing and, in the middle uh, there? Who's, huh? that? Who's that right there? No, that's, that. that is Scott Mule Dick. Uh, Wilburn, that some bitch got a fucking dick about that goddamn long. It's amazing he don't have it out because that some bitch he likes to show oh, it. Yeah, you don't want to go behind him. You will be in front of him when you go to fucking. If, you, if you're running a train, you want to be in first. Yeah, oh, oh Scott, and then uh, that's me, and then that's a little rowdy Drake down there in the corner. Yeah, yeah, that's my buddy Jeff Drake kid, and that 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 boy over there in the chair, that's an Australian kid, right? And uh, he, I got in a big fight. I mean, where I chewed the guy's nose, his ears. I mean, I fucked him up worse than polio. And I blacked out. Mm -hmm. Got pulled a gun on me. And I woke up and I'm in a pool of blood. And ain't none of it mine. And I am drenched because I was chewing on him. And I go, holy shit. And old, old Todd's his name. Todd was with us. And and the girls took us to the house. And uh Anyway, Todd's 18 years old. Boy, he ain't there. Australia. He's over here learning how to ride cutting horse. And when we got done, them girls are bathing the blood off of me. And old Todd's over there in the chair. He's going, I ain't never seen nothing like it in my bloody life. <laughs> I swear to God, I ain't never seen nothing like it in my bloody life. You was chewing on him like an old rubber dog. Like an old rubber dog. He gave his police statement, took his cassettes and his Wranglers, and was on the next plane. Back to Did yeah. he work for Lex? No, no, he worked Kathy Dawn. Yeah, but that was over Kelly Jean's Who's the, Who's the lady with the baby? That's Penny Drake, uh, Penny Williams now. Yeah, I just, she was married to a friend of mine. The, the first tent I lived in uh, was in, in, her, in her backyard. And, uh, yeah, she was married to a good buddy of mine. I just never thought that this would be the attire on Coyote Man Clay Reed for going out at night. Dude, you never had any idea what the fuck I was I was going to wear it. Like really? I say, you remember the one I was wearing Bugle Boy fucking yeah. shorts and yeah. goddamn wife beater. wife beater shirt. Yeah, I, I, I had no genre. I, it depends on <laughs> you just wore it, it depends on the where I was going. We're going to prep party. We're going to oh, dress prep. We're going right. to Hard Rock. We're going to put on the fucking extensions and uh, <laughs> go Van Halen. Yeah. So did y'all end up making it to the strip club? No, fuck no. <laughs> we were just fucked up right there. Yeah. 
Are you yeah. double fisting or is that is he holding that beer? No, he's holding that beer. I'm fucking. I'm just dancing jig. I don't even have a fucking clue. We were just, and I'm pretty sure there might have been some marijuana involved in this <laughs> picture too. <laughs> yeah, because that chair where old uh, Todd sitting in, I think it was the day before me and my wife Kelly and her best friend Mandy. We were sitting there and we got high, and I remember. I mean, the funniest shit. A damn moth landed on my eyebrow right here, right? And we laughed for two fucking hours over that moth poop because I would I would raise my eyebrows like this and that fucking moth would go I mean it's so fucking high. We fucking we do it. Do it again, do it again. You dumb, dumb son of a bitch. But I was fucking mad at it because when Kelly lived in this, we were dating. And then I got thrown in jail, right? This is Kelly's house? Yeah, that's okay. her and her roommate. Right out of high school, they got this house. And they're, and, and I go, I get thrown in jail. For, I'm in jail for like 30 days, you know, and counting. And, yeah. And, of course, it is amazing. How much more in love you get with a person when you're behind bars. I mean, <laughs> you, you become in love with your girlfriend or your wife, and you get Jesus. Everybody <laughs> gets Jesus when they're in there. I pray to God I won't come in. But anyway, I called down there at this fucking house one night. Going to call Kelly. You know, I get my, we get a little phone call over there, and I, I say, hey, what are you doing? All I can hear in the back. <gasps> hey, you having a party? <laughs> no, we just had a few friends. Kelly, we need some beer. We need some more beer in here. Who the fuck was that? Oh, it was, it was just Todd. It was, it was so and so. And was, Are you having a fucking party while I'm over here fucking sweating <laughs> out and fucking jail, you motherfucker? <laughs> no, let's call this motherfucker back. You better turn that shit off. I was, oh, I was so fucking mad. I was, I was still. So, like, you were in jail for 30 <laughs> days? Huh? You were in jail for 30 days? Yeah. Absolutely miserable. Worst 30 days of your life? Uh, fucking jail is. Once you get past that first week and you the figure out you're not, it all. you're not getting bailed, uh, then you become the jail basketball champion. And, I mean, we had some fun times in that fucking jail. <laughs> I, I tell you, I tell so you, you made the most of your time. I will tell you the funniest fucking story. We, you know, at, at 11 o'clock, they put you in your individual cell and you, you stay in your cell, right? And, of course, we're talking about Arch City. We're not talking San Quentin. You know? Right. You wouldn't worry about getting shanked. Nah. Yeah, like, Otis no. the Drunk, basically, next to you. I was the king of fucking Archer County Jail, you know. And <laughs> so we get in there, and uh, but in the cell next to me was a guy named Cockroach and another guy Cockroach. named Lee. And I don't Cockroach know, and Flea? Yeah, <laughs> Lee. 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 Oh, they said yeah. Flea. Yeah, but that's about the same because <laughs> Lee was about that fucking tall. We should have called him that. But anyway... They they been there long enough to where they uh, they were trustees. So during the day they would go out and they'd work for the city, right? But when I first got in there, Lee, you know, he's been there like eight months. And uh, well, it was rodeo weekend. They were going to let him out. It'd be, no, it no, it's Mayfest. I think it was. They were going to let him out, and he go. He lived over at Burpenett and then come back on Monday. So he left when Burpenett went on Monday morning. He should have come back in. He's got a bag of weed in his shoe. So he, he's not very smart. Hell, he wasn't, wasn't going to do anything. Yeah, because they don't frisky or nothing. Hell, right. he comes in jail and gets in there and that deal. So for the whole fucking month I was there, every night, him and old cockroach would <laughs> smoke a doob. You know, you hear him over there, be what? Be careful. Be careful. You hear him. Anybody go? No, he's cool. You hear him. Well, they got down to their last fucking joint. And where they had to hide it was in the purlin up top. But you had, I mean, you had your tin, you know, your corrugated tin, and then it purling had a little old gap in there. Now, if you pushed it too far, <laughs> it went over into the purling, right? So you're SOL. And uh, they got down to that last fucking joint. And for Cockroach to be able to reach up to there, he had to reach out. And so Lee had to sit down because he had to stand on the bunk bed. And then Lee would hang on to uh, Cockroach's knees. <laughs> So he could lean out there and deal. And I, I'm over in my bed like this, you know, just sitting there and taking it. All I can do is hear. And all of a sudden I hear, all right, now be careful. Don't you drop that over there. Be be careful. Be careful. Then all of a sudden you hear, oh, shit. I don't want to hear, oh, shit. You didn't drop that motherfucker in there. Next thing you know, they're all there fine. They had pushed it, he pushed it too far and it fell over there. So the next day they go out and they go to work for the city. 
Well, they get over there at the fucking deal, and they find two hacksaw blades, and they goddamn broke them in half, brought them in their shoe, come in there, and for the next month, that's all I fucking heard was hacksaw on <laughs> it. Trying to hacksaw that goddamn uh, purlin so he get, get out, that one, one joint. Didn't he go to home every day for a weekend? No, no, that was just that one weekend. Just the radio. Really, they expected a, a busy weekend because they had a big oh, day. Oh, okay. I thought but, he was getting to go home every week, though. No, 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 no. Because no, no, Andy no. worked with the guy that used to have to go check in. Yeah, no, checked not in. this guy. He checked in on weekends. We, I was working at the golf course in Lubbock my last year and at Tech, and uh, it was one of my first weeks there, and like you know, getting to know the guys. And I was with this guy, and I was like, "Well, you got any big weekend plans?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm going to jail." I'm like, "God damn, you, you're gonna fucking blow it out, aren't you?" <laughs> He's like, no, no, I gotta check in here at twelve thirty. It's Friday, so I gotta check myself in. He was and, like Otis. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. yeah. <laughs> he had gotten, uh, he'd gotten. I don't know if it's a DUI or DWI, but anyway, instead of doing it all in like nine months, he was doing it over the course three days. Every weekend, he'd Friday to Sunday, and he'd come back to work on Monday. And I don't oh, know. I, I don't. It might just be better just fucking take your time out and just get it all done. That's what I did. Hell, like I say, hey, they, you know, they, when I lived in that tent right outside town, you know, I never had a fucking, you know, I, I couldn't, I had no money, you know, a day working poor, living in a fucking tent. Yeah. And I eat a can of beanie weenie once a day, and that's at Huffman Station. But the law pulled me over one day up there and, Give me, wrote me eight hundred dollars worth of tickets. No insurance, no license, no tags, no nothing on that truck. And I show up Monday morning at the set. Hey, I need to set these out. And I said, okay. And they kept me eleven days. And uh, so well, about two months later, I get out and they they say they write same guy writes me the same ticket. And I go up there again on Monday morning. I said, hey, I need to set these out. Well, they kept me 11 days the first time. This time, they only kept me seven days. And then the third time, it's December, and old Kenneth Stevens wrapped me them tickets and said, Lad, are you ever going to get this pickup legal to drive on the highway? And I said, no. And he goes, what do you mean, no? I said, well, Kenneth, you got to look at it like I got to look at it. I said, I'm living down there in a fucking tent, freezing my fucking ass off every night. I said, eating a can of Beanie Weenies and a deal of crackers once a day down at Huffman Station. So I go up there and get a warm cotton three square meals. What the fuck do you think? <laughs> and he goes, tore them up and said, get the fuck out of here. And then about a year later, old Dad Creighton pulls me over and I said, Surely you're not going to give me a ticket. He goes, fuck no. So I, ain't, <laughs> I ain't feeding your fat ass. He said, but I'm going to warn you, we got a new guy, old Corey. Now, he will write your ass up. And I said, well, you better get ready. Get the Dairy Queen ready to go. So that's where they, they got all <laughs> That's where they, they feed you? all Dairy Queen food. But yeah, we had, it wasn't all. You, you know what's sad about that, or b the bad thing is, and I used to see this in court all the time, you'd see the same people with the same little, like you said, the driving violations. And they can't ever catch up to them because they can't afford to pay the ticket yeah. and afford. And I was a zero tolerance on insurance. I got to have insurance. You got to have insurance. Yeah. Registration and stuff like that didn't bother me as much. That's just giving money to the fucking state anyways. I mean, I had a job to do, and but I would, I was really good about, you know, pay me $10 a month. And as long as people pay five or $10, yeah, I, if camp. they brought two or three fucking dollars, a single mom or a dad with kids right. or whatever, now, if I saw your ass buying fucking fifty dollars worth of beer every Friday night, I didn't feel as sorry for you. You could pay fifty or twenty at least twenty five a week to us. Yeah. But I, I'd know people that would get caught up in that and then they'd get all those um those extra charges put on them, you know? And fuck yeah, and then they, they, they don't ever kid. Yeah, they, they, yeah. You you you're you're hurting your chance of letting them ever get ahead. Oh, yeah. And that's not what we need to be doing as judges. We don't need to get people where they can't get ahead at all. But make a, a little common sense. Yeah, you have a little you know, make an attempt to try to pay your debt. But let's help them get insurance, put that money towards getting insurance so they can go to work. Because it didn't no good. I used to have guys all the time. I had an old guy in town. He got a ticket for speeding, 55 and 30 or something, 35. He comes in and wants to argue with me. i got a nephew that's, a, uh, that's an attorney. I said, okay. Oh, yeah, that always uh, works. Okay, he's an attorney. you got a speeding <laughs> fucking ticket. I'm just going to set it out. He's an older guy. I'm not going to say his name. We'll call him Mr. Smith. I said, Mr. Smith, you're 70 years old. You're telling me you're going to set two weeks in jail to pay for this ticket. Well, how much are you paying a day? $50 a day. We'll go to them over in Haskell. They're paying. We'll go get a ticket in Haskell County. But it's $50 a day is what I'm going to give you. You can go set that out. And I said, it's $500 ticket. So 10 days. You don't have nothing better to do for 10 days. You're not going to miss your wife's cooking. Oh, my, my, my nephew's an attorney. I said, I don't give a shit. So bring him up here too, but it's a cut and dried ticket. You were speeding. 
why don't you just, you know, just be an asshole about it? But I said, you don't want to. Yeah, I'm all versed. I just didn't understand it because there's better things to do. I understand people, but people all the time want to set it out in jail. We don't try to do that. Or I don't, I'm not judging them, so it don't matter. But I hated to put, have people set it out. Yeah. I said, don't you have anything better to do with your life? Bring me $20 a month and, yeah. and work. Because most people can't afford to sit 10 days. But this guy here was going to just show everybody. And I said, I'm going to tell you what. I think about it after one day. I said, what's going to happen is I'm going to let you set that out. And you're going to go to that jail. And I said, I'll bet you by supper time the first night, you're calling your wife with a checkbook to come down here and pay you to get out. <laughs> it wasn't me. No, because you didn't have no money. <laughs> yeah. But right now in your lifetime... If they if you had a five hundred dollar fine for something, or they's gonna let you set it out over ten days, what are you gonna do? You're gonna come up with five hundred fucking dollars. You got things to do. Well, I, I do, but I'm also hard headed stupid. <laughs> <something. laughs> it depends on how I felt about the ticket. If it <laughs> if it was something I, I damn sure did. And, so yeah. how many when you were in jail, how many other people would be in there? Obviously you had cockroach and oh, Lee. There was a steady Cockroach and Lee was the mainstays. Oh, they, we they had were one guy that was in there. He was on his 24th DWI. Ooh. He's going 24. to prison nowadays. But back then, it was just yeah, another. Yeah, he was fucking. Wasn't no, I mean, he was fixing to go down, go, which was his third stay in prison. And we had one guy that I wound up beating the shit out of named Tommy after I. He was a pretty good dude until I figured out what he was doing to get in there. He would He would read the obituaries and find out. Where when the funeral was, uh -huh. and while everybody was at the funeral, he'd go break into their house. They, I just read something. Somebody did that in a bigger city. I can't remember where it was, but doing the same thing. Read the obituaries yep. and would like, I guess, stalk them and uh -huh. go find out raid their, their home. Did you ever watch uh, Shameless? No. That's what they did. They needed a hot water heater in their house. Yeah. Their hot water, and they go, okay, look at the obituaries. I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? And they'd read. Oh, they're having a wake for JoJo and yeah. so and so. They go to his house and steal his you fucking beat, deal. You beat his ass. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. It, I wanted to beat his ass, but it didn't have, you know, it's, it's hard for me to just beat his ass. Because, I mean, you know, I'm not one of them guys that just goes around beating people's ass. You got to piss me off, you know. Yeah. And now you, you can't even piss me off. But <laughs> then, uh, but then he started cheating at uh, Spades. And that, <laughs> was, <laughs> that, that was the catalyst. That was, it. That was the catalyst to get his ass whooped. <laughs> Because I want to whoop his ass, but that then he set the timer off. You know, when I got mad, I fucking I'm go ahead and whoop his ass. Yeah. What was what was what was the stakes back then? Were you playing for money or cigarettes? cigarettes? Yeah, cigarettes. You played for cigarettes, <laughs> snipes. You played for snipes. Cause we ain't got no cigarettes, but you know, when we go work for the city, yeah, that city shit. You know, after I was there eleven days, you know, they said, hey, you want to go. You want to go out and work? I said, hell yeah, I ain't seen fucking daylight in 11 days. I'm ready to go anywhere. He said, all right, we're going to take you over to Winthorpe. So they take me over to fucking Winthorpe. And uh, they, you know where the cow is? Mm -hmm. Where there used to be a big old concrete pad out there, right? And it was a hard labor. They gave me a fucking sledgehammer. My job was to break that fucking rock up, that concrete deal, and put it on this fucking trailer. <laughs> and it's the middle of fucking, you know, it's hot. It, it's May. and All your buddies hot. fucking with you? No, that, that's where the insult to injury. That guy's one of them. Kurt, I mean, uh, Raymond, Kurt, all them with horse guys, right 100 yards from him as where Kurt lives. And uh, and they're having a big fucking party. Oh. Big giant party. Got fucking bikini girls everywhere. And they're, hey, Ray, you want to be a fuck on you, motherfucker? <laughs> Next day, you want to go work for the season? Nope. Leave nope. me in this motherfucker. I'll play spades all day. <laughs> Whoop Tommy's ass. Do you ever know Frankie Goff? Yeah. Frankie was in jail in Archer County, and he told me this story. And I, I love Frankie to death. He died a long time ago. He was a funny son of a bitch. Frankie said, you know, Jeff, what they did? They wanted me to go out there and fucking hoe on the street. He said, I was sitting up on the, laying up on that lawn under a chair, and everybody else was doing yard work. That old guard come up and kicked me in my fucking ankle. Get to work. He said, listen here. I don't work when I'm not in jail. I damn sure ain't working while I'm in jail. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of truth. There. Frankie was a, he, he was a uh, bounty hunter. And he would go. He had a Cadillac convertible. He's a dog patch. Yeah, kid. he used to work for Old Max Green. Yep. Uh, collect, yeah, collecting. Yeah, and he's in, he's in Dallas doing that. And he'd go in there, and it's him, and he had a big old fucking dog, and he'd go into those bars. Bobby Green, Bobby and Green, grab them old guys, Green, yeah. and grab them people out of them fucking uh, bars. Anyway, somebody ended up putting him to sleep with a gun. But oh, I sure did like old Frankie. He was a good guy. He was a yeah. He was a year older than me, but I knew him. He called me Stan Stanfield everywhere I'd go. But How old I was he? Was he older than you? Frankie was one year older than me. Oh, no shit. He died 20, 30 years ago. But he's a bounty was hunter. Was he on a bounty whenever they shot yep. him? Yep, got killed in Dallas at the bar. But he was a good guy. 
I, I liked him. He was yeah, he was always good. Him. Anybody that treated me good, I didn't give a shit where they come from. If That's you were nice to me, I liked you. And I liked Frankie. And Frankie never bothered nobody, but he beat his own drum. But, I never fucked with anybody unless they stole my brother or my TV <laughs> or shit like that or cheated spades. No. What's, yeah. what's spades? How do you play spades? Like hearts. You don't have to play spades? Uh -uh. Jeff oh, was a bad dad. Fuck. We played. I teach y'all to play poker. It's, it's, it's just spade? your trump. Is you it? get as many spades as you can. An ace of spades is the highest trump card. Then a king, and you bid on it. There's four people playing, and you know there's 13 cards. There, there's there's 10 and there's 11, deck? 12. Yeah, it's a full deck. And if you've got six spades, you bid six or well, something or five. And Like say for couples, how we used to play all the time with yeah. old Melanie and Brian Bullard. And, and we'd go there two or three times a week. You know, it's the guys against the girls. Playing God spades. damn, it's cutthroat, motherfucker. Yeah. You, you get so you would bid on. You bid. And you've, I think I can get three. And your partner says I can get five. And if you don't get it, you, you're minus 80. But if you, you get it, you get 80 plus each one you get. Oh. And you try to fuck the other people yeah, you out You need of to stuff. learn how to play space. If you ever go to jail, then you'll know. You'll, yeah. have, that you'll have something to do. Game. That is the game. Man. Andy and them play spoons. What? That's y'all's game. Yeah, I don't, I'm not I a spoon player. Jesse, play spoon. Jesse, Andy's wife. It's her game that they play. Can't even remember how to play that. I'm terrible. I've noticed my fucking memory has gone to shit. But you get old. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Like I can't. Like if if we were playing spoons right now, I'd have to have somebody refresh me on how to play it. But yeah, we play it every all the all all the holidays. You have. If there's five people playing, you got four spoons out there. Oh, I can't yeah, remember. I played you played spoons many, many, many times. Oh, yeah. So you I always, know how to play I always it. skip it when they play oh, at the house. Gotta be, gotta, gotta yeah, be yeah, ready. Yeah. Gotta be ready. Gotta be well, ready. What, how do you, when do you it go to, when do you go to grab the spoon? Oh, uh, fuck yeah, it does. Oh, yeah. It's fucking. I had the motherfucker. <laughs> we don't play games, period. It's fucking read house all. You know, the Too other day I had Kelly turn 50, and she, you know, uh, I said, Kelly, what do you want to do? If you, we were going to go to Terlingua, and then we were going to go to this. And then we decided, eh, let's just stay at the front. <laughs> so we're we going the same thing so here. I just wanted peace and quiet and all that. Well, guess what? All my 58 goddamn kids come out there on a surprise. Then we're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and so we got all these fucking people out there, and a brother and sister, or sister and her husband and all that. So, and so we get on this son of a bitch, and, and of course, I'm, I'm good. At entertaining crowds, I'm just not very good at dealing with crowds. Even if it's my fucking family, about an hour into it, I'm yeah. giving you the Irish goodbye, and I'm yeah. fine sneaking out somebody. I, it, it rolls. So sure enough, about three hours into it, I'm at, I'm out in the barn working on a fucking lawnmower. Yeah, and uh, of course, and hiding, you know, because we got like nine grandkids, five kids, his sister, and her. I mean, it's fucking bedlam. You know, bombs coming at me from every direction and I'm the guy that's usually in charge of show ponies got to fucking put on the show and entertain well that show pony had out needed a drink of water we went to the barn we're in there well then about two hours later they figured out hey dad's gone you know and they said they call me and they call me and they keep calling me and keep calling me I keep I keep calling and then finally I answer it Dad, where you at? I said, oh, I'm out here feeding the horses, you know, in the barn, you know, da, da, da. And so when we need you, we're playing Pictionary. Fuck Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck no. I ain't, no. Games, y'all know better than that. Yeah, games do not work well in the house. Well, after about an hour, I thought, surely the motherfucker's going to leave, you know. Goddamn. Right. <laughs> Don't it's feed them. 7 o'clock. I'm tired, you know. <laughs> Been eight hours fucking with these motherfuckers. So anyway, I step in my back door and... You know, because I live on the west side, and they were all on the east side. And uh, so I'm trying to get to my bed so I can go to sleep. Well, one of them said, Dad, come here. We got some pictures. I'm like, fuck, God damn. Shit, I get in there. It's like World War Two. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, no, you, you, can't, you, you can't talk. You can't say that. You can't do this. And I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> I finally just flipped them off and went to bed. Just wanted yeah, a nice quiet night with Kelly Jean. When you get older... Sometimes a quiet, nice house, nobody's nothing oh, at all. Me, me and Michelle have since hunting season's gone. We hadn't, the grandkids hadn't been around much, and, and we don't have the boys around at all. It's just me and her. We've got a little, we watch, we're watching a series. We've got a new TV series we're watching now. It's called The Resident. We really like it. We walk shit till 11 or 12 o'clock at night, staying up later than we normally do. Fuck. But I, that, ain't, I ain't seen eight o'clock in so long. Anymore. During hunting season, nine o'clock, the house is dead. Yeah. Everybody's asleep. But now that we're off the hunting season, nobody's getting having to get up early, early. We, we, we've, we've, our, our time has changed again. You know what time but, I got up last night? 
probably at 3.30 or 4 o'clock. 11.30. You got up at 11.30? I got up at 11.30. Went coyote hunting. What time did you go to bed? 8 o'clock. So you got and three that was late. And that's late. Like, three hours. Is that normal, though? Like three hours of sleep normal. is... That's all you yeah, run on. Yeah, two or three hours. All Red Bull and nicotine just yeah, keeps you going. No, I don't even. Hard, I don't really drink Red Bulls very much. You smoking still? No, I mean. Well, you when said- I hunt on a coyote hunt, if I go like this weekend, I'll drink Red Bull and I'll smoke cigarettes. But then the rest of the week, I'm I don't smoke shit. I, I actually got a pack of cigarettes in there, but and I may go out there and smoke one one out, but it ain't like I smoke chain smoking I, anymore. I can put a, I can smoke a carton. In 24 hours, and then I'll not smoke again for I a saw year. Uh, they were talking about how bad vapes are. They said um, one vape cartridge that's really popular with high school kids, a, a cartridge of that is equivalent to 100 packs of cigarettes. And they said a kid in high school and college, they're going through one of those about yeah. every 10 days. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Two weeks. That's 10 packs of cigarettes a day. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, that's that's it's gonna be. I don't know what and California and, and, and them energy drinks are just. Oh yeah, they're fucking. Terrible. I don't know what kind of studies they did on vapes before. I've never vaped. I've never smoked, so I have no clue. But I can't imagine there's been a whole lot of case study on these vapes to what it's going to affect kids twenty years down the road. And my well, youngest know. son fucking vapes, and I can't stand it. And when he yeah. talks to him on the phone, I'm. Yeah, and I hate that shit. Well, yeah, I California wants to ban. He finally quit. Though. California banned flavored nicotine. I got nicotine pouches. You can't you can't buy flavored nicotine in California. But what's the proof on them, good or bad? Oh, these are perfect. Well, of course you're saying that. This, so they said this, about Skull in Copenhagen. This is a Light and Peach yeah. This is a yep. gift from God. This is a gift from the heavens. Is all that this is. Where does nicotine come from? That's a good question, Jeff. I'm asking you. I don't know. I don't know. I'm that assuming a plant. Tobacco. What? Huh? I don't know. No, I, tobac- I look it up. Tobacco. Yeah. So this, it's tobacco-less. It's just nicotine. Nicotine is the perfect drug Where's for Where's it you. come from? Nicotine? Yeah. Well, this, look is, it up. This, this comes from, this, you know, this is all <laughs> synthetic. <laughs> this is all, this, I don't think this is organic, but. Uh, Where does nicotine come from, though? That's uh, my question. You're putting me tobacco. on the spot here, Jeff. Um. But t- tobacco's got the carcinogens. The high that you get off of tobacco comes from nicotine, the drug. Nicotine and caffeine, they're basically the same thing. So you're good. If you drink coffee, you can take nicotine. You're fine. But uh, these are just three milligrams. Nicotine originally stems from the tobacco plant, which is found in the nightshade shade family of plants, I'm which includes tomatoes genius. and eggplants. Interestingly, what we refer to as tobacco plants is, in fact, the nicotina tobacco species of plants. Right. So, so I'm assuming tobacco's that, bad for you though. Tobacco's got the carcinogens that gives you cancer. Nicotine. And what you're getting perfect. is what you're getting is not what you're getting is synthetically produced nicotine. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Is is an al- alkaloid. Yeah, everything synthetic comes from salt. Yeah, that's all it is. Just just some nicotine and salt's all that's in these. But uh, Tucker Carlson, he he's a big Zen guy, and he gave the perfect description of Zens. I did not realize he was such a drug addict. Tucker Carlson, I guess he could party back in the day. but um, He's a very smart man. See, and it's all the nicotine that he takes. But it, Naturally, it comes from plants. So. I was ne- I'm not a smoker, not a dipper. Um, I don't even know how I got started on these. One of the guides. But When we were in Canada. Fuck. You just feel your little brain just crackling and all these little connections going. You said you can't remember shit anymore. Without these in, think about how bad it would be. <laughs> If I wasn't, Sounds like a crackhead. Don't if I wasn't play. supplementing, don't have no problem. Yeah. <laughs> if I wasn't supplementing, how bad would it be? <laughs> you'd, be like, you'd be like that guy on the, the next photo. Yeah, there's another photo on that. Facebook oh, the guy my, that was passed out? <laughs> yeah. So I didn't see that one. Oh, you oh, didn't? Oh, that dude. Uh, there's Kelly oh, there's Jean. I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, there's there it is. Who's that, the kid in the back? That's Justin Coleman. How old is he? The, uh, Where's he from? He was a singer in high school, I think. You know who he looks like? Do you remember Jeff Ray? Yeah. He, not Jeff Ray, the basketball coach. Oh, no. Jeff Ray that went to Ryder. He looked kind of like Jeff Ray. Oh, but now. So he just, this poor guy Jeff just Ray, the basketball out. coach, uh, never went to a party. This guy just passed out. That's Craig Ayers. Just passed out in the truck. Oh, he is fucking through barn. And he is not a singer. He is like a freshman. And uh, he is fucked up. And every time I'd open my truck 
door, he'd fall out. So I taped his head to that seat belt so he wouldn't <laughs> so fall out. So it was out. for safety reasons. Then. Yeah, you weren't just being a jerk. Safety. Yeah. Did Jeff Ray the basketball? I was the safety guy that night because see old pretty boy Justin. Yeah. We went to a big party over there at uh, uh, Henrietta. And, and, of course, you know, they didn't want us Archer City boys at this Henrietta party. They were a threat to the pussy, especially old pretty boy in the back. You know, hey, let somebody look good enough. I'd have took him home. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, so we're all there and we're partying. When all of a sudden there's this, this one guy over there, he's a big, tough, badass, you know. And, well, he doesn't know that I'm I'm with Justin or whatever. Next thing I know, I says, he goes, I'm fixing to put that motherfucker to sleep. Watch this. I'm going to put that motherfucker to sleep. And we're just my partner. Yeah. So I'm sitting there and said, okay, we're going to watch this. <laughs> so he said, watch this. I'm going to go around the back because Justin's in the front talking to these girls. So I follow this guy. So I follow him. We go out the back door and he comes in. And I'm right behind him. And he don't even, he's oblivious that I'm there. And I know he's fixing to sucker punch Justin. Mm -hmm. So he goes up there and just about, he gets about right there. He's fixing to hit Justin from the side, from behind. Justin's sitting there pumping bullshit. He goes like that. And when he did, well, Clay beat him to the cheap <laughs> shot. <laughs> he, he went to sleep. And old Justin turned around and he goes, the fuck happened to him? I said, he was fixing to knock your ass out. What? He said, yeah, they were in there like that. And that's when we left. <laughs> does, uh, does Jeff Ray... He wasn't a party. The kid, from, the great basketball player, coach from Midwestern, nice kid. No, I, I, I never I, seen I mean, him at a party in my really, life. I didn't really know him. He was a lot older than yeah, me. Yeah, but. he was a way older than me. And he, and I, you know, I didn't get to Archer City until '89. I didn't know a motherfucker in Archer City until '89. And like I say, I, I went over chasing pussy with an, another guy when I got introduced. So how old was Kelly when y'all got to? Because you said you're seven years older than her. Oh yeah, yeah. I was down there at the school in a, a white minivan with some candy. <laughs> hey baby, I got some candy. You want to get my you want to pet my puppy? <laughs> yeah, she was a senior in high school. You know, I still have people come up to me from Archer City that I, was I don't a even file before it was cool to be a pet file <laughs> that uh, that I don't know. They'll come up to me and say, "Hey, are you Jeff Stanfield? Yeah, yeah, I'm so and so." I'm yet to wait from one of the 911 rape girl calls to say that, that that's one of them. Not many people are taking credit for that. No. No. And none of them still live there, thankfully. Oh. Well, that's probably why. I bet they Jeff. know, though, about the story. But, like I say, I know two of them got the old surgery in them. Some bitches, they're still ugly. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they ain't got the <laughs> ugly surgery yet, but they did lose weight. Uh, yeah. That's one thing me and Mr. Adams talked about the other day was – Clay, he's not afraid to use names at all. Mm. So, no. Now, no, that fucking Charles, I, I'm tell you, he's pushing, getting my. Do yeah. you know the Gringo Mandingo guy that's on TikTok? Hell yeah. You know him? Andrew Lindemann? Yeah. That's who it is? Oh, yeah. That fucking. They're, the videos that that guy's. The Gringo Mandingo, <clears throat> they live right up the road from me. They do? Hell yeah, I see them every day. Is yeah. he. So, like, is all that, is is any of that staged, or does the guy get going that easily? No, no, no. That's Gary Joe. Which Gary what, is, Joe, what are these? Gringo of, Mandingo? I don't know. Oh, it's it's better, it better rip run it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, because I, I keep trying to, oh, Gary Joe, he come in there one day into Davis Supply, and he's, he's wearing these fucking uh, Daisy Dukes. And, yeah, cut off deal. No underwear, and his nuts hanging out on both sides of <laughs> And I was like, God damn, Gary Joe, get the fuck out of here. Man, I was fucking hiding, man. Shit. So I wonder if he knows. The, and, so and he doesn't know he's being videoed. He doesn't know he's being videoed then. Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he don't. You know. So they're always just fucking with this guy. Oh, I mean, oh, is this the guy they all fuck with? Oh, my God. And it's too easy to fuck with Gary Joe. <laughs> So that's Especially. his house. And like they're, they're acting like that's they're going to house. Yeah, he, he lives in his yeah, yeah, he's, he's a hermit. But. He what doesn't the fuck know. Is he, he doing? He thinks somebody's breaking in, and that's just them yeah, fucking with him. He lives out in the middle of the country, you know. Right up, right up. <laughs> so then, <laughs> so they play it off, and it's then cheaper like to buy it rent run. And then the next day, oh fuck, where he is speaks it? in cursive. He speaks in cursive. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no shit. So that was part one, and then the next day they like go to men to like what happened? Tried to get in the door. I fought them all. With what? Fucking your muscles. <laughs> I, I, they couldn't get. They couldn't get the door. Would you hit them with? And then I, I had a clutch laying there. I grabbed it, opened the door. 
wham, I hit that something, they took off running. They run around that truck, got in the car, I saw them. They went up that stage way up ahead of me. So and I, I don't know who Joseph Kincaid is, but yeah, Joseph, yeah, Joseph Kincaid gets blamed for more shit in the Gringo Mandingo page, he is not a fan of yeah, whoever Joseph, the fuck. I'll tell you some funny story about Joseph Kincaid. I had <laughs> show another one of his videos first. I want to see the one with him drinking the one hundred twenty five thousand down below. Here, we'll go to this three yeah. three the million. This one? Three, that's where he got it. It's cheaper. I bought the motherfucker. It was cheaper to buy it than going rent run. Than what? <laughs> than rent run. <laughs> oh, rent it. Rent run. Bought the motherfucker. It was cheaper. To uh. Yeah, they've got T-shirts all over America. It's cheaper to buy it than rent. Look at that house. Who is this? <laughs> they just get them going. Well, you goddamn dope head, quit calling me. <laughs> so you see this guy all the time. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, they, there's about shit. There's a whole herd of these. Matter of fact, his brother, they uh, found him dead. and He lived in there in Archer. And hell, he was daggum in his pickup in his front yard. This one, I think they almost killed him here. Where they had the rattlesnake? You gotta get the key, buddy. Is that that one or? Oh no, this no. is the one where they blow the tires up. I think. Oh yeah. Oh my damn! <laughs> <God. laughs> That's Joseph right there. Oh, it is. Now that goddamn Joseph, he ain't allowed out here. Bob done yeah, said it. That goddamn Joseph, kill you. I'm trying to find the one where the Gringo Mandingo on TikTok is what we're watching, oh, y'all. Yeah. Gary Joe, he's a legend. Um, he's they, a good motherfucker. What, too. What's that thing where they will blow up a tire or air up a tire real quick? They snuck into his house when he was asleep. No, so these people just fucking come and go out of this guy's. He's lucky he shot somebody. Well, no, see, Andrew is uh, his dad owns the place out there. So does he have kids or a wife or anything? Gary Joe? No, the other uh, old man. No, he's never been married or anything. No. How old is he? Oh shit, he's probably 60, 65. So you've known this guy a long time. Oh yeah. And he ain't changed There's much. His brother up there, poodle. Poodle. Yeah. <laughs> he should know flea and tick or whatever his name was. Fuck. Flea and roach. I'll never find this video. I know that they. Which one is it? Yeah, he's the here. Fuck. It is right here. This one's fun. <laughs> this one gets me every whatever this machine's called. Oh yeah, word. So he's. Gary's sleeping in I there. I haven't seen this. God, look at that house. That Jesus. blows quick air, like, immediate. Always fucking with the guy. I mean, that just, fucking house got a muddy. Yeah, oh, Andrew, I used to coach him in football. That's funny as fuck. I used to coach him in football, and he's a terrible football player. But he, he got up there, and, you know, they're like eight, nine years old. And he, I'd say, Andrew, get your ass in there and make a tackle. He said, he turned to me and said, I'm trying, coach, but that damn 52 won't let me. I said, oh, okay, my bad. And then he'd come up to the line of scrimmage, and he, he'd get, just about get down, he'd go, he said, uh, coach, uh, are we pushing or are we grabbing? <laughs> I said, you're on defense, you're grabbing. That's how he determined whether he was on pushing or offense or defense. Yeah. yeah. His career in football didn't last very long. And they might I said, he's going to be in a race. I said, is Joe going to help break? He don't know how to run that shit. I said, what, is he going to put him in that swather? He said, he don't know how to run none of this shit. I said, fuck. Pike can run it better than he can. He said, he goes in that son of a bitch and puts a motherfucker in road gear. And he said, them rakes will just be all fucked. I ain't that nobody would run a rake in road gear. That stupid motherfucker. Let's go back. Stupid mother. I said, <laughs> yeah, he's hot. I wish they'd had pictures of him and them goddamn Daisy Dukes. Gary? Yeah, because yeah, he got them little bird legs and them fucking nuts hanging out of both sides of that goddamn <laughs> short. Because, I mean, they're, they're cut high. They're cut off jean short, cut up high, and there ain't no room for air. And, I mean, them fucking two nuts sticking out. Did you see they stole his keys the other day? Uh, oh, goddamn. He was fucking hot. Oh, he gets married. Just on the wall, like, fucking so he, going to whip everybody. But like he's just he's just sleeping in there. Hey. <laughs> it's like did I hear something? Hey. 
I mean, that poor show. So, so the, the kid that fucks with him all the time, that guy works for his daddy? Yeah, he did forever. But he's re- retired, supposedly. So what's he do now? Oh, he still helps him, but he's, he'll, he'll tell you he's retired. I ordered this bullshit, and I'm fucking too old, this goddamn bullshit. Does he, does he go to the cafe some? Uh-huh. Oh, here it is. Gary no, Jones, bye. <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> See you boys later. My keys out of my car. What? Somebody got my keys out of that car. You got your fucking keys? You want to check me? Somebody did. Uh, probably lost them. No, car. I didn't lose them. They're probably in your damn pocket. They ain't my pockets. I checked them. You think I'm stupid? <laughs> well, I don't know. You lost the keys to your damn house and had to get one for Poodle. So I don't know what the fuck you did. Come over here and uh, accuse me of Somebody shit. Took, took the keys out of that car. I didn't take them out. I left them in the mission. He's I mean, <laughs> tearing his fucking car apart looking for the keys that they have. <laughs> what are you honking over here for? What? So what the fuck are you honking about? I ain't honking. Bullshit, there's Your gas fuel's open. I don't fuck with that. <laughs> You're gonna lose your gas cap too. Don't worry about it. Don't fuck with it. Every honk. Somebody, one of all got them keys. Nobody's yelling at me about your gas. Yeah. That's I what I'm saying. saying. No, I just said leave it fuck alone. I got right out in front of my door. A dead, dead rattlesnake? Yeah, you did it. That's a dead rattlesnake. Big deal. Big deal, it is. How? Why would you do that to <laughs> your friend? You fucking thieves. Fuck Nothing him. but a bunch of sorry motherfuckers. You know what he does? Trying to figure out who that is. I don't give a fuck what he does. Why don't you got that? Must be All the time. I love Gringo Mandingo. <laughs> oh, Anytime that's... I see another video, I'm like, fuck yeah. Does man. he know that they put all these videos up? Oh yeah. He don't care. Yeah, because he got he got. Uh, I remember the first day he got his first prize package. Oh. You know, somebody sent yeah. him a package, right. and hell, he had a picture of him. On there, you know, a screen printed on there that said cheaper to buy it than a rent run. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, what's the other? Did he get mad about it? Speaking in curses? No. <laughs> and then, and they see him a bunch of chips, and he's like, he didn't give a shit. He throw them fucking shirts out. Like, yeah, yeah, damn, those fucking Doritos. I like, <laughs> I like, I like Doritos. Does he know. does he drink a lot? I guess every day a bunch. Every, oh yeah, every yeah. day. He's a cutter. And all them cutters are world famous drinkers. Yeah. Hell yeah. The Cutter family or? Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Matter of fact, I, uh, I think all oh, two girls that are uh, at work at our cafe, beautiful girls. Beautiful girls. They're Cutters. Yeah. I can't remember. They're Cantoon. So that's Uncle That's Uncle Gringo Mandingo. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Gringo Mandingo is Andrew Lindemann. What yeah. were you, you were going to have, you had a Joseph Kincaid story. Oh, Joseph. Yeah. Joseph, when he was in high school, he's a fucking hoodlum. I uh-huh. mean, I mean. Straight running. It, it didn't fall far from the tree because his old dad, oh, his dad's a good motherfucker. But anyway, old, uh, one day I, I bought this car. There, I went to the post office and there's a sign up there that said 85 Buick Sabre, uh, 300 bucks. And I thought, God damn, 300 bucks and some bitch can run. It said, does run. So I went over there to the apartment complex, the uh, uh, government apartments and there's this old lady she's got this car a beautiful saber which is you know the paint's fade but there ain't a dent on it i look inside velour seats all power everything all that and i i look down there and i see the miles on it forty four thousand miles i said ma'am are those actual miles and she goes, I told you it had high miles on it. Do you want the fucking car? Do you not? <laughs> and I said, Well let me let me listen. I'll give to you two hundred. So I I started the car and it had a a wine to it, you know. Hell, I opened the hood and all it was, uh, it was out of power steering fluid. Mm-hmm. I said, ma'am, and I mean, the, the motor looks like it's brand fucking new. It's got 44,000 miles on it. And I go, God dang. I said, ma'am, that's just slow on power steering fluid. Do you want the motherfucker or not? She's smoking in Marlboro Reds. I said, yeah, I'll take it. And so I give her $300. This motherfucker, I went down to the all support of goddamn 
can of fire stand, and I mean run like a fucking top. It's basically a brand new fucking car for three hundred bucks. So what it did, we put mug grips on it, and Jake, you know, they were like twelve years old. Well, they would drive it from Archer the back roads to the ranch, and that was their fencing vehicle. Well, we left it out there to set of pins one night, and goddamn no, uh, uh, Joseph Kincaid, Derek Chambers, two holiday boys. They went over there and busted all the fucking windows out of that oh, son of a bitch. Every fucking windshield, everything. Just a bit old Clay was pissed. Yeah. And so, well, the next Friday at the fucking holiday football game, my boy is over there and goddamn Joseph's bragging about, yeah, we busted all the windows out of that deal. So I found out about it and I called old Justin. I said, hey, motherfucker, you going to pay for them goddamn windows? And he goes, oh, I'll pay. Don't go to the law. Don't go, my daddy. Don't go, my daddy. I said, all right, you owe me $600. And he goes, we'll get it. And he motherfucking come up with 600 Hell, I only paid 300 for the fucking car. Everybody said, did you get the windows fixed? I fuck no, I put that shit in my pocket. <laughs> I, said, I said, it was fucking. So, you know, we, 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 $300 yeah, car. $300. Because what we did after that is we wind up, I, I took a chainsaw, a skill cut saw, roof off. and I cut the, uh, a hole in the back seat roof, you know, part of it. And then I put some molding around it. And Jake and Dawson would stand up in the back seat with shotguns, and I would drive it crossing wheat fields chasing jackrabbits. That was our hunting wagon, you know, because it didn't have a no windshield. I could run that goddamn deal. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it made one hell of a fucking little <laughs> hunting wagon. But old Joseph, he, yeah, he got his ass. But you know what was bad? If you got on the highway, yeah. everybody say, what them paintball mask in there for? Because one day I was driving it to Archer to get some gas in it, and I'm going 75 mile an hour down the road, and one of them fucking jumbo grasshoppers hit me in the fucking head. You ain't got no windshield. And that some bitch hit me. So after that, we got our paintball mask. So when we're driving down the road, we, drive, we look like fucking Max, Mad Max Thunderdome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that fucking old car. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. We had a guy out here. He got his truck. This was... 15 years ago, probably 20 years ago, probably almost. 20 at least. <clears throat> he was going and he had some guys, he had some friends that worked at a neighboring outfit in Rochester, about 10 miles away. So he'd, right. he'd take the back roads and he'd go over there, drink beer, and he'd come back. Well, it had rained one night, and there's a road here you don't fucking go down. Like you'll get stuck there in the middle of a drought. <clears throat> he, ba- he had a big excursion at the time, one of those big old heavy motherfuckers slid right off into the ditch. Well, he had been talking to a girl that worked out here. That the talking was, is a nice term. That was dating, had dated, broken up, broken the heart of one of he my was friends. was sexting face-to-face. That, anyway, she'd broken the heart of one of my buddies. Well, they were being high school kids, fucking around on the dirt roads, and they see his car stuck in the ditch. They took the fucking baseball bats. They busted every one of the fucking windows out of that. Big ass excursion. Headlights, tail lights, everything. They went to town on it. And he never did find out who it was, but we all found out later. We figured it out. We, it we figured had a it out pretty, pretty good quick. Yeah. suspicion of it, but they beat the piss What's bad out is, of that is excursion. On his, he comes in and I told him, I said, hey, because the game warden told me about it. And so we went out there and I was like, son, bitch, they beat the shit out of it. And we didn't know at the time who did it. Then I told him about it. He's like, oh, bullshit. I said, okay. He thought I was fucking with him. Got there and he said, oh, my God. But he picked, he pulled down his visor and he had about all his tips, like $2,500 in cash tips were above the visor. And them boys didn't know that. Thank goodness. Damn. But they beat the fuck out of every window. That some bitch was beat to shit. Didn't he leave it here? Because then they, isn't that what the repo man came out here for? Was for that excursion? Yeah, but that was a, a year that later. That was a year later. A year later, come out to repo it. It wasn't here because he, he flew down that, yes. that second year and, and rented, bummed a vehicle from Rented us. a blazer from us. Yeah, you don't want to leave no car parked anywhere around me. Oh, Brian Griffin. You know Brian Griffin? Mm-mm. Yeah, we call him one eyed Mexican, you got one eye. He, he works for Lindemann. His name is Brian Griffin, yeah. and you call him one eyed Mexican. Yeah, one eyed Mexican. <laughs> hey, he looks like a Mexican got one eye and uh, uh, got knocked out in the old field accident. But he's a good, good friend of mine, so fuck him. And, uh, but old, old Brian, he, he, you know, the Legion Hall sits right there in the middle of town, basically, right? Well, he goes into the Legion Hall one night, and then he fucking he gets in a car with somebody, and they go to Fort Worth. And he leaves his park, truck parked right next to the fucking highway. Right next to the fucking highway. Well, it's there like three, four days all weekend. Well, I 
as soon as I seen it, I went up to the goddamn, I went to the uh, office and got me a can of, or a deal of shoe polish. And I come by there and I put uh, one-eyed Mexican gay <laughs> gay service, uh, you know, shit, all kinds of shit. Draw, draw the big old fat gal with giant titties <laughs> on the windshield. Put all kinds of derogatory remarks on, on the top of that. And that somebody sit there next to the highway for four fucking days. And it sat there so long, it was in the summer. Oh, she had baked on it. baked on it. So even when he washed it, it still <laughs> said, yeah, uh, one-eyed Mexican gay, gay service. You know it was you? Gigolo service. That's what I say, gay gigolo service. And I put his actual phone number on the side. Yeah. Did he know it was you? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Immediately, he was calling me when he got back from Fort Worth. You motherfucker, I can't even wash the shit over. <laughs> oh, oh, Brian, that fucking one-eyed. Uh, it was funny. We were in the cafe one day, and old Griffin, we are sitting there, and a buddy of mine named T.J. Mayo, his three little kids, he's got kids there, which are grown now, but they were like eight, six, four, you know, bam, 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 and and they're over there sitting in the booth, and they're redneck hillbilly hoodlum ass kids, you know. And they're over there, and we're making faces, and they're flipping them <laughs> off, you know. Yeah, yeah. I said, you better watch. Oh, Griffin tells me, you better watch out, all. Take my eye out and flip it on that one little kid. You ain't got no fucking eye. You don't bullshit me, man. I don't play. Oh, yeah? And old Griffin goes, bloop. And he popped that fucking eye out, and them three kids are like, you ain't got. <laughs> but that was funny enough but there was a guy sitting at the table over here named max mm. and max it grossed him out he he had oh. to run to the damn uh toilet because he's thrown up yeah, yeah why did you name how'd you name him the one-eyed mexican well he's got one eye and he looks like a mexican we call <laughs> him we call him chavez yeah chavez the one-eyed mexican but yeah that's some of it he's <laughs> shit when you worked in the old patch, did you ever get like any injuries or anything? This poor one-eyed Mexican lost an eyeball. You no, I, was, I was pretty good. He was almost there when one guy burned up on a paper fire. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, there's been some bad injuries. You know, <laughs> hell, like I say, when I was, at, man, I really just started mash fingers and shit like that. But you never no. came close to like losing a finger or anything. No, no. No, I mashed them pretty good. Run, rolling collars, you know, rolling collars are like three hundred dollars or three hundred pounds per foot, mm -hmm. and you roll them over and you mash them in it. You did that pretty regular. But no, I was pretty. But like I say, there while I was in the field, there was some, yeah, like that one old boy sprule. You got a rat hole sprocket. You dig the rat hole, which is which puts good. Anyway, that rat hole sprocket's about that big. Mm -hmm. You know, fucking teeth that light, right? And this one worm, you know. Rookie oil field guy, we call him Worm. Well, this one worm was up on the rig floor while we're drilling. I wasn't there, but they were drilling a rat hole, and that sprocket's going. Well, that fucker, he wind up falling into that goddamn deal, and it just chewed his ass up. And the two guys, the driller and the other hand, when they pulled up, they were just throwing up, throwing oh. up, throwing up, and they had to take like six months to a year off because it fucked them up so bad. And he had. One old boy he decided to eat a sandwich up there on top of the derrick. And they hit lime, which caused it to shake. Yeah. Shook his ass out onto the draw works. And the one guy was playing hide and seek, and he crawled into a diesel <laughs> tank. And then they filled it up while he was in it. Uh, shut the lid and then filled it up. Uh, God almighty. Oh, and then the other, you know, you set your, you stab your collars up there on that deal. And one dumb son of a bitch went to jerk it over, and it went past when it put, come past, you that the elevators don't have a hold of it. All the weights off of it, and that some bitch comes off first one. Whoo! And the old driller told him, he said, he goes, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. He goes, just pull your foot back, son, because it was already cut off. I mean, just right behind the toe. Yeah, it, they, I'd say there was some monster fucking injury casualties back in there. It's always it's always the guys like throwing the chain that freaks me out when I see the video. Yeah, and, and the chain's probably the less like. Really? Well, I take it back. That's when I, I had a chain break one time, mm -hmm. and uh, I was chain handed. And when they went to pull it tight, that some bitch broke and it cut shot back, and it hit me in the shoulder, and then it hit me in the jaw, and then when it did, it spun me off the top of the rig floor substructure, which is twelve feet, and I fell down on the pipe. Broke a few ribs, broke my jaw, cracked my shoulder. But, uh, hell, 
but I was too young. I was 15 years old, so he couldn't take me to the doctor. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm not even supposed to be out there. You know, yeah. you had to be at least 16 to be covered by the insurance and be even out there. So all I could do was go out there and put ice on my jaw, waited 30 minutes, and had come out there and did it one-handed, you know, crippled. Yeah, there wasn't no – yeah, there's a bad – it can get bad in a hurry. Yeah, well, they, you just got to pay it. You got to pay attention. Yeah, like, you yeah, know, the guy yeah. playing hide and seek. <laughs> yeah, there's, if you if you're a dumbass, you can get fucked up pretty quick if you ain't paying attention. But I was always pretty good about paying attention. But I did some of the dumbest shit because, you know, like when we worked Derek's, mm -hmm. hell, I never wore a fucking. You know, everybody's got a, a harness that you put on there. You know, to keep you from falling out. Fuck, I was up there with fucking tennis shoes, ball cap, shorts, and a tank top half time, fucking with a cotton rope tied around my waist, you know. And, and fucking then when we got done, uh, I'd slide down the drilling line from all the way up there. You're like, oh, I'll just slide down it. Which is, I did that until one guy did that, and there was a wicker. You know what a wicker is? No. Well, a wicker, you know, that drilling line's about like that. Well, all it is is small wire wrapped in right. tight well then when it gets wore out a piece of that will pop out oh fuck that yeah so you slide mm. down there and that motherfucker hit that wicker and it just ripped that fucking hand wide open mm. and so we didn't do that no more what, after that. what i would like to know the percentages because we are so over regulated on stuff oh, and all the safety man, I'm shit i'm gonna tell you another thing the, the dumbest okay. thing i ever did you got a, a cat line right cat line you got a cat head over there which is going around around and you got the salt line big rope right so you wrap that rope and say so you you put a hook on whatever's on the other end it goes up into the derrick right and it comes down here and if you needed to pull up a joint of pipe or whatever you know you put it around there and you do a couple of uh wraps around that deal and then pull it tight and it catches that wheel and it goes up well i had to go up there into the derrick for some reason i think the uh, driller graph line had come out of its shift so I go up there and I say, told my buddy Marvin, I didn't want to climb all the way up there. I said, hell, just get that cat line and pull me up there. So I, I make a loop in that deal and I put my foot in that loop. And I'm holding on to this fucking cat line. <laughs> Nothing securing me, you know, just like Tarzan, you know, going 80 feet up in this fucking air. Like nothing. Well, I fucking, I get up there and I, I go up there and about the time it gets up there, it fouls out, which it just kind of like catches, you lose control of it, and it'll go, and that motherfucker jerked me up into that top of that derrick, and it went, bam, 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 hit me three times on my mm. fucking head, and, and I have a ball cap on. <laughs> it's a miracle it didn't knock me out. Yeah. And, uh, but all I could do, I finally grabbed a hold of the fucking derrick, and I'm sitting there, and I look like the fucking Flintstones with three fucking rocks, <laughs> and I'm over there, and Marvin's going, oh, goddamn, are you all right, all right? Fuck yeah. Let's don't do that no more. God damn. <laughs> don't do that no more. It's a miracle I didn't die. Well, I would like to know what the percentages are of people that still get hurt compared to back in the day as much. Because this is well, you don't safer. do anything anymore. That, well, people ain't yeah, no fun. Yeah, you don't got spinning You know, you don't have spinning chain. You don't dig run arounds. You don't, you know, you got steel pits. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole different game. Everything's hydraulics. You don't. I mean, that's yeah. just. Yeah, that that right there is a good old lay down rig, you know, probably and just this chain work. Just, whoop, there it goes. Yeah, see, he went a little too high for my liking. You like it a little bit lower. Well, so what's yeah. that chain do? It gets it in a bind, and then you can yeah, screw it in. Yeah, that's kind of like the cat line. That's cat. See, the cat line will be over there to, behind that. Yeah, but it's basically the same deal. You know, you put enough wraps on it, and then you pull it tight, and it and it spins. It'll it'll turn it. All fucking day doing it. My that. only experience ever is I wrenched rides for a couple of months for a guy one time. And I learned real quick that I did not want to work in the oil field. Yeah. That's that right there, them fucking slips, is that'll make a man out of you. Them slips. Those heavy things that they just put. Heavy motherfuckers, you know. So that old guy right there, strong fucker, and don't even look it. Oh, yeah. You got damn right. Didn't because, even take the cigarette out usually, of his mouth. Usually, that's why you got two handles. Usually, you got two guys pulling slips. Oh, and he did it by himself? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and them elevators. Just all fucking day doing that. What's funny, What the first day I ever worked in the fucking oil field, first day, I ain't never even seen a fucking drilling rig. And I'm 15 years old, and I get out there, and it's me. You got the driller and an and a inside hand. You got a chain hand. I'm the outside hand. I, I would be working on the outside of this deal. All right, you'll see 
All right, here, here in a minute. All right, he'll pull the slips up. All right, and then he'll, all right, and that'll go back in the hole, put the Kelly, well, I guess they probably just put the Kelly on. Uh, but right, nope, they're making connection. See, right here, when you get to this part, see them, them, uh, oh, shit, god damn, I done went fucking blank, where the elevators are at the bottom, and then you got your blocks up there. Mm -hmm. That top of the block, that deal top ahead of him is big, huge. That's where all your cable and everything goes through. Well, it goes up, it pulls everything back up into the deal. They're fixing the hook onto the Kelly and circulate. But anyway, I'm on a 1945 lay down rig that's on a float that is so old it's bowed, you know, <laughs> on this. I mean, this fucking rig is old. It's a lay down, <clears throat> which is basically what that is. All right, well. Right there behind that guy in the blue shirt is where your draw works are. But this, that's a little bigger deal. These were right, you didn't have hardly any room for the inside guy. And the, the draw uh, uh, draw works where your, your uh, drilling line, everything comes in right behind it. You can see the line come in by. Mm -hmm. All right, well, and it's very compact in there. So we made it, we made a connection. So basically you pull that line up. What it now? What he's fixing to do? He's gonna put on the Kelly, which will shoot the mud down in the hole, and they'll spin it. And that, you know, the shit, the mud goes through the bit while it's turning, keeps everything lubricated. With all, all that mud does is bring everything up. You know, it shoots the water out, it runs the water up, and out into your pits, right? Well, uh, we made a connection. Well, what had happened? What? Got in too big a hurry, my driller did, I guess. And what he did, sometimes that hole, when you come out of it, it'll bridge. It'll cave in down there at the bottom. Well, and it'll cave in. And then when you go back in, if you're not paying attention, you'll sit down on that bridge, and which is what he did. And then he started drilling, da-da-da-da. And, uh, well, uh, in the meantime, when, it, when he does that, uh, he goes back in there. He's filling out his log. Well, old Jed Simmons, he's over there, little short, fat guy about that tall uh, with overalls on. He's pulling his chain out. And all of a sudden, well, when that uh, uh, that drill pipe, that bit went through that fucking bridge, well, then it's got a gap so far where it just falls because mm. it ain't got no weight on it. I mean, you ain't got nothing holding that pipe up, so it just falls. And when it does... It jerked every the whole fucking rig fly. When it does, it knocks the fucking uh, drilling line out of the fucking uh, uh, the shiv up up top. Well, then here comes them fucking goddamn blocks, them two big giant oh, ass blocks yeah. coming. And Jed just barely had fucking time to do the backstroke over the back end of them fucking uh, those draw work. And he's going fear for his life. And I mean, just barely missed crushing that son of a bitch. And then he thought, thank God I made it. But then all that fucking drilling <laughs> line come down on top of it. And it's fucking heavy ass shit, too. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm out there pulling another joint of pipe <laughs> and I'm going, 15 I'm years old. questioning my career choices <laughs> right now. Just melted him. Had fucking, he had to get like 200 stitches all over oh. him and fucking. But. He couldn't do nothing to them. Yeah. Uh, Look at well, them. the ambulance is going to be here in a little while. Let's go ahead and try to get this all put back together. <laughs> Look at these, these guys here. No no, no. fire pants. None of the fire resistant shit. Not even hard hats on. No. It's a different world. Yeah. we. I never even had fucking boots. I had tennis shoes. <laughs> I don't remember ever having fucking red wing boots until late, late in the year. I wonder when they changed all that shit because... I, I wrenched her eyes. They still do it like in eight, that. In 1986, probably. And I didn't have, we didn't, I've had yeah, a pair I, of I, old I, coveralls I, I put you, on I over. I you to the rig right now that is just like that right that there. That they're still doing today. Yeah, they don't fucking, they, yeah. Every rod machine, every drilling rig in the Archer County is just like that. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah, they don't have. I don't know anybody that's ever wore a fucking hard hat. <laughs> I still don't know anybody. I can get on Snapchat right right now. <laughs> hell, I'm sure Dal Dalton D Woody and them is out there wrenching rods right now. And they, they ain't got. Hell, they're probably wearing Crocs half the time. <laughs> do you ever do you ever get the inkling you want to go back and help them a little bit? Me? Yeah. I I really liked it, enjoyed it. That shit was work. And I and if I'm gonna work, I like to be busy. I like to fucking do that. I mean, like, tripping pie. There was nothing. I liked working on the lay down rigs because lay down rigs is assholes and elbows. And, you know, we go 1,500 feet. So 
two days, we're done with well and we're moving to the next thing. Now, you get into the bigger wells where you're going 10,000 foot, you might be on that motherfucker like two months. Mm -hmm. And it's slow drilling. So all you're doing is sitting there. I couldn't stand it. I got too much crack in it. I mean, I, I, we, we had one of the funnest fucking times I ever had is those two or three years I worked for Dean Drilling. I mean, because... It was all of us buddies. We're all the same. Age. We all had BB gun fights and Derek <laughs> Claude fights, and we worked our ass off. I guarantee you, Carlton Bedeen, who died just last year, will tell you right quick. He said, y'all can say what you want. Them is the workingest motherfucking crews I ever had because we got shit fucking done. I mean, and a lot of the time, it was motivated, motivated by we want to go party. <laughs> yeah. We got to get this shit done. If we if we, if we get this uh, TD today, then Todd's going to log it, and then we'll be able to da da da, and we'll get Sunday off. That never happens. But you know what? That's the difference. I think today is people don't work places are boring. They have to be. Even being a fucking fireman today ain't like being a fireman no, was. Or in the military, everything. I watched. A, I just watched a series called Pacific, and those guys was bad as instant TV show, but they fucked with each other all the time. They weren't politically correct. They, and they fucked with each other all the time. If you didn't have a fucking sense of humor, but boy, it would be so boring to oh, work somewhere. Like Kenny, when I burn him, hell, that's so much. He was, he was done. That was <laughs> yeah, it? I quit. He didn't have a sense of humor at all. <laughs> but see, see, working here, if you don't have a sense of humor, you ain't going to last here. Oh, no. Because we have a good time around here. Yeah, you better have alligators. Yeah. Skin, yeah. And, and these people today, know, very few oh. places have it. Fucking sensitive. I mean, About every fucking thing. You can't even fuck with nobody no more. And it's just it's just such a boring world that we live in compared to what it used to be like. Yeah, it's a whole different game. So you got you a belt buckle. I did. You added a belt buckle to your collection. I added two belt buckles. Show pony. Yeah. Show, show pony, pony that. Got, got That's the, a Nevada uh, one? No, What's this that one? is the West Texas Big Bobcat Most Coyotes. You know, there's like 600 teams in it. That, is that the one in San Angelo? Yeah, paid I, all that money for that bobcat, didn't it? Yeah, for the bobcat. I'm not into weight contests, so I never really hunted it. But I really can't call myself the coyote man if I can't win the fucking biggest fucking coyote contest. And because they got a side pot for most coyotes, and so I decided this year I was going to do it right off the block. But they have a cow cut on it? No, no, no. Very few. That's all about time, and they don't. Very few contests have cow cutters anymore. I thought about putting a contest on here. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Me and Zach had this conversation. I said, he goes, you ought to do it. I said, I can get my sponsors probably to do it. I said, what kind of money can you make on it? Oh, you don't think you make any money. You pay everything back. I said, well, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> That's too much fucking work if you ain't going to make some money on the deal. Oh, it ain't really that much work. has to be. No. Baby, I did it by money? myself for 25 years. Where'd you get rid of all the coyotes after this they is, killed? You don't do anything. They got to, You got to get rid of, They get. Re, you're responsible for your own coyote. So you so make them leave with their coyotes. Oh, yeah. I thought, man, you had a thousand coyotes stacked up there. I thought, fuck that no, shit. I'm no. going to get rid of that used crap. Used to Graham, what they did, they had a trapper that would come get all the coyotes. He took the glands out of them. And I, <laughs> that ain't going to happen. But no, no, they, no, it ain't a whole lot. As much you, I mean, hell, I did mine for 25 years, and I've basically done it by myself. But this is the first year in 25 years I didn't What's do it. What's the cost for a polygraph guy to come out and polygraph everybody? Oh, uh, shit. No, nowadays, nobody uses a polygraph anymore because it, uh, you can take two Xanax and a muscle relax <laughs> and pass any polygraph. <laughs> well, you were telling me before Jeff got here that uh, one of the tournaments you did, you had to film yourself. Oh, my God. That, 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 that was a contest in Missouri we hunted. It'd take you 20 minutes to qualify a cow with all the rigamen row that you had to perform. You had to film uh, yourself walking. One of your partners had to film yourself walking to the cow. Then you had to film your your partners walking to you in the cow from 50 yards. Then you had to uh, uh, dissect where he got shot. You had to do the shake video. You had to do, I mean, it was so much stupid. I was going to do an outlaw contest. So what I was going to do, you got to kill coyotes. It's a coyote hunting contest. It's outlaw. There's no rules, no nothing. Awesome whoever brings fun. the most contest, whoever that's, brings that's here, awesome it brings the most coyotes. The all yeah, The all substance. What I was going to do all here. The rule is there is no rule. <laughs> yep. That's that's what I wanted to do. And it was going to be like 200 a team, and the winning team gets 75%, and Jeff gets 25%. I mean, there's, there's plenty of contests that take some off the top. Well, I was going to. I would, otherwise, why would I do it? Yeah. But that's one thing I thought about doing. I thought about doing one. At these big contests, is it legal to bait? No. You cannot bait. 
what uh, if you hunted a field? What if you got a field that the guy had a cow that was dead in it? Then you could hunt off. As long as nobody put anything out there, but some contests, some of them you can't hunt within so far from a hunt, a, a dead or a dead pit. Or, uh, but as long as a guy, uh, as long as you're not putting shit out right. there, if it died on its own right there, then you can hunt around it. Some kind. Every one of them's different. Yeah, right. and you know, and but you couldn't of, purposefully go out to like a fifteen hundred acre wheat field and put two dead cows no. in the middle of it. No. See, my contest would be you do anything because the the whole thing is set up to get rid of fucking coats. Yeah, the, I notice there's a lot more raccoon contests this year. Yeah, because they're, everybody thinks they're saving all the turkeys and quail. Yeah. And they're shooting them. Hell, one guy shot like a thousand coons somewhere. Shit a lot of raccoons. A ton. Yeah, and they'll be back next year. And they need to because, like I say, it'll help the quail out. Twenty, you know, there's some contests they have possums, coons, and skunks. Mm-hmm. And you don't bring none of them in. You just take a video of each one. You know, da da da. And and then some of them, like April, we got the coon contest up in uh, Holiday. Where it's the big coon, to, and then the most you got the biggest coon, and then you got the most coons. I think thirty-one won it last year. Hell, two years ago, I I just barely you got to kill five coons or you can't weigh your coon. So I barely killed my five coons, and if you killed your five coons, you get qualified into this uh, side pot. Only the people that qualified get in it. And I didn't even know about it. And it was a two thousand dollar cash pot. You just ran it. If you qualified, you get in the pot, and they just draw your name. I'd be damned if I didn't win it. And I said, "Hell yeah!" There you go. And then, uh, and then I'm sitting there, and then all of a sudden they have the drawing for all the door prizes. And there's a thousand dollar suppressor, and I'd be damned if I didn't win that. So <laughs> <It's a> good <laughs> day then. Yeah, it was. Yeah, because I was a no coon. Kill. We killed all my coons in one. One barn, and I shot a fucking hole in my goddamn barn. You, sh- <laughs> you shoot a coon with a fucking howitzer, it will go through them and make a hole about that. Shot that. It was up on, on one of my pipe stalls, and uh, I shot that fucking coon, went through and blowed a fucking hole that big out. Have you ever skinned a skunk? No, and I will not. Never never will? No. One no. of our guy that hunts with us, Big Earl, he, he'll do them. Oh, I know a bunch of people do them, but I'm not that guy. I've got a skunk. Pelt somewhere around here, a couple of them, I think. We're uh, we're he he given my son a <clears throat> raccoon hat, coonskin hat. They like uh, the one fella I can't remember his name. Daniel now. Boone. Yeah, him. And uh, we're redoing our house right now. And I was laying, I'm laying floor in his bedroom, and um, we've been putting down tar paper for our underlayment. And anyway, uh, ran out of flooring, so there's been a couple days where we hadn't been laying flooring. So, like, they hadn't been sleeping in there. Nobody's been in that room. Well, I walk in there a couple days ago, and I'm like, God damn, something stinks in here. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Smell, it smells like something dead. <clears throat> and I'm, like, rummaging around. And I'm finally like, I bet it's just that tar paper. And I take a big old whiff of that tar paper, and, yeah, that's what it is. And anyway, so anyway, I'm, like, straightening some shit up, and I flip over a lid, and there's that fucking rac- that coonskin hat sitting under there, I thought. I thought something had me. I thought this is what's fucking dead, and then I inspect it more, and it's just that coonskin hat. But I'd put two and two together pretty quick. Thank God it was just that tar paper, because yeah, if there's there gonna went, be a raccoon in the house. I, I had never bigger went to problems. Jail one time because skunk pelt. Uh, one day I come in there. I used to go to Canaan Corner every morning. That was that was our go-to spot. That we ate breakfast there every morning, four thirty. I was there. It didn't open till five, but I would be there at four. The guy at the wheelchair still there? Or he'd been dead a long time. This is that right after he died, and but I mean I went in there then, and then he died. But when this event happened, it was right after he died. I we got a feed yard up there, right? Anyway, one day I go into the cafe and old Judy that used to run it. Then she goes. Hey, the game wards in here looking for you a while ago. And I said, looking for me? What the hell's he looking for me? He said, I don't know. I th- he said, he was there. She goes, oh, bullshit. He wasn't looking for me. And she goes, yeah, he was. I th- you're fucking with me. So anyway, I just blowed it off. Well, then I come back at noon. She goes, boy, you just missed that game warden. He said, he he, he come by again looking for you. Oh, you lying, mother. She goes, yeah, he left his card. And sure enough, Captain Rick Medford takes a part of my arm. <laughs> I'm trying to think what I'd done. And I was like, nah, bullshit. And uh, anyway, left, come back at, that evening. And uh, she goes, man, you just missed him again. I said, bullshit. said, 
He left a message on your answering machine at the house. You know, it was before the cell phone day. It's all right. And, uh, oh, at lunch, I said, I'll call him. So I called over there. And they said, oh, he's out in the field. And I said, well, you tell him by God Clay Reed's looking for him. And I still thought they was phone. And then when I got there that evening, I said, left a message on your phone. So I hauled ass to the house. Sure enough, this is Captain Rick Medford with the Texas Park and Wild. I'm looking for Clay. I said, well, shit. So I called him. I said, uh, yeah, is this uh, Mr. Medford? And I said, uh, yeah. I said, who am I speaking with? I said, it is Clay Reed. I heard you're looking for me. Uh, yeah, I said, we got a complaint against you over at Cam A. I said, for what? I said, well, they said you were selling uh, fur without a fur bearer's license. Do what? He said, yeah, they said you were selling skunk pelts 100 at a time. <laughs> and as soon as he said that, I knew I'd been had. Somebody's but, fucking with you. Because what it would happen, we had been having dog problems down at the feed yard, so I put steel traps up everywhere, and I wasn't catching nothing but fucking skunks. <laughs> and so I, and then I'd have to fucking get them <clears throat> skunks out of a trap, and for two weeks I smelled like a fucking skunk. <laughs> and so uh, I said, well, yeah, a man's got to eat. He was eating a skunk. I said, yeah, I eat the skunk, sell the pelt. He was, you gave friends of Cam A. I said, I don't anymore. Ah. And I, so I found out who it was that was fucked with me. So the guy that was, well, he had a feed yard right down the road from it. He had cattle out on. It took me two years to get even with him. But I had to wait till the right moment. I knew what I was going to do. He had cattle out all the time. We had cattle out all the time, you know, vice versa. Well, two years later, uh, it is pouring down fucking rain. I mean, straight fucking down. And uh, when I pull in, I pull into the uh, cafe, and Sai's already beat me there. He's parked out front. So I go over there to that left front tire of his, and I let all the air out of it. And then I park around to the side to where I can see his truck. <laughs> and out front, there's a payphone there. So I go on that payphone, and I said, Dude, let me talk to Cy. Si. Cy si gets on phone. I said, Cy, si. I said, this is Clay. I said, you got 75 head of yearlings running right down the middle of Highway 25. I'm on the back side of them, and I can't get around them. You better get here before somebody hits them. Holy shit, I'm headed that way. Boy, and I hang out, and I run over, and I get my pig up, and I'm smoking a cigarette, and I wait, and he comes out. Well, there's an air compressor right there in a, in a, 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 a utility closet right up by that phone. But he's got to wind it all out, got to turn it all, <laughs> got to go get the deal. So he's out there, get, got to let it air up. And, he, and, you know, it's slow rolling, pouring fucking down, right? <laughs> and his fucking old black hats just rolled down on both sides. <laughs> and stuff, pouring down. And about the time he got a deal and he started rolling back up the deal, I walked around the corner. I said, where are you going? Did you get a put in? I said, payback's a bitch. He goes, <laughs> You motherfucker with water <laughs> dripping off of that. And oh, I'm going to get even with that goddamn game warden because <laughs> cause out there we got a place, my dad's got a place that's uh, Ansel, and it's fucking deer haven. Poacher City. Everybody wants to poach out there. It's by Wagner. And I and so he get calls pretty quick. But they're in that southwest corner of our place. Don't even have a road to it. And it's way back here. And there's a hill way back here and back. And I was going to take me a battery and a spotlight and hang that spotlight <laughs> in the tree on a windy night. Hey, Rick, we got somebody out there spotlighting at the Ansel. And he, he would, you would have to walk to get to that <laughs> fucking deal. And with a, a sign on that tree, said, payback's a bitch, ain't it? <laughs> that's he, he, he wind up fucking retiring before I could get even with him. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah. Clay don't forget shit. You got damn right. Uh, you got a long-ass memory. If I knew where he was right now, I'd still get even with that son of a bitch. Um, you don't ever want to get even. You want to get ahead. That's right. What uh, have they got the fires in Amarillo put out in the panhandle? Uh, no. They're still going. Oh, they're still fucking going. Yeah, yeah, because they had that guy. I mean, they kind of have it half-ass contained, but then the what was it day four yesterday? They had them big winds coming in there. It's a fucking their fuel again. We're gonna have Dustin and Garrett on with us in a couple of weeks and talk about. It. They went up there and did a lot of helicopter work. Talk about all of that. They flew a lot of. A lot of miles in their helicopters putting uh, fire I, out. Yeah, I called that one place a hunt on there. 77,000 acres burned every bit of it. Burnt the house, burnt the tank barn, burnt the brush. And you know, I told them, I said, hey, you know, bring your cattle. I got 500 acres of wheat down here. You can bring them down. Here. I don't think we'll have a cow left. He said, two nights in a row, we drove around, or two, two days in a row, we killed probably 600 just shooting them. Have you ever had to do anything like that? No. Not to that extent. I've been lucky. Our ranch up there, South of LaFour's, it burned up 
2007, I think it was, burnt the whole ranch. It's 40,000 acres, and it just barely tipped this. There was a different fire. You know, you had the Stone Creek, and then you had the, uh, I think it's called Great Creek or something like that, which was at LaForge. just barely hit ours. But that's when it killed five people. It killed old, oh, shit, was that boy Crockett and his girlfriend and that boy from oh, uh, I remember that. Breckenridge. Yeah, yeah, it was bad, bad, horrible. What Did it just get to moving too fast? People can't get out of there? yards per second. It was 65-mile-an-hour winds, that buddy man told me up there the other day. He said, there was no fighting. You did not get in front of it. He said, you just had to run for your life and get the fuck out. 100 yards per second. He said, there's dead antelope, there's dead deer, fucking everything's dead out there. And if they ain't dead, they're all sitting up there, burnt, plum. Yeah, you just drive around and shoot them. Fuck. Sad, sad, sad deal. Terrible. Terrible and like I say, I hunted <laughs> up there in November. And where I usually hunt up there at Perrington, you know, grass, four, five, mm-hmm. six inches maybe. I got up there and, fucking, and the fucking grass is like, god dang, three, four foot tall. And I said, what the? They had 41 inches of rain up there in July or June. Mm-hmm. So they had fuel like they never. And in November, I told my old buddy Hunter, I said, there's going to be bad fires this winter if somebody don't prevent burn. And the only ones that prevent burning was Borger, the town mm-hmm. of Borger. They burn all the way around their town and then plowed it up. Right? You can pull it up and you'll see the pictures of it. It's sad to say, but I mean, Fritch. it'll it'll come back more oh, fertile. It's already, I mean, it's, like I say, it's, you know, because right, I think the next day or two days after, it had that snow, but it didn't from about Canadian West, right? And where they, the head of the fire was, but yeah, it's already, you know, they already got grass. It'll come back with vengeance. It looked beautiful. It's just all the stuff those people lost. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. How, the houses and all oh, that yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, there have been people that can't survive the loss. Mm-hmm. I wonder what the wildfires had had to be like all the time out here back in the Plains days. I got newspapers in 1926, 1929. Mm-hmm. It's the Archer County uh, centen- Bicentennial newspaper. It's about that big. It's cool as shit. It, it, I just like reading it. I found it in an old house. But it's got a picture of all the old ranch houses back day. And we got a mansion there at Mankin. It, when it sits up on a hill. So you can see forever back behind it and a tree within a thousand miles. Mm-hmm. Because before they had VFDs and fires, there wasn't nothing to stop them. So it was the natural, uh, yeah. you know, it kept everything back. It, it, it was nothing but grass out there then. Because, I, mean, I mean, just lightning strike or anything. Back in the yeah. Indian oh, days, yeah. it happened in the Indian oh, days. Yeah. I mean, fire is a natural occurrence and mm-hmm. it cleanses the land and stuff. It's just you lose all the, the cattle and all that stuff. If it wasn't for... The, if it wasn't for the cattle and the loss of house and stuff yeah. like that, them farmers wouldn't care if they had all their cattle out because they're going to have nice green pastures. Yeah, a lot of people do control burns all the time, and it's the best. If as long as you got a good fuel for the mesquites, mm. oh man, it's the best. And prickly pear, that's the best damn thing you can do to get rid of that shit. Because they had a big fire out here whenever we were moving back. Mm-hmm. What? But they just cut the fence for the cattle, though, didn't they? Yeah, but it wasn't that it, the winds weren't that bad. It just burned a bunch. But then you went back six months later, and everything was green and right. growing and looked nice. But it's natural to do it. The problem, like in in California, when I was there, I noticed all the bro- they have they, they got ten or twelve foot of just kindling under all their trees and well, shit. They don't, they don't them, clean the brush they, under the brush. They cut all the logging out. Yeah, yeah. You know, where it used to, they would log and, and cut strips there. Now all that shit's dead. You yep. know, you, you, they would cut all. Keep everything fresh. Well, now you got all them dead logins on there, and then you don't have those breaks in mm-hmm. the w- woods. You know, it was just like this shit. You don't. I don't understand why you don't come in there in January on a good day. You know, and burn, burn some stuff because you know it's going. It's January, never January is when everybody. It's burns. never going to happen. They think, oh, it won't happen. It won't yeah. happen. And then when it does, it's like fuck. I wish I'd have done that. I ain't burning grass, man. Yeah. I did. Yeah, but they don't understand. You know, it it come back. For us, it's January. Up there, probably February 1st because, you know, it gets warm. Down here, everything quits growing December 1st. Everything starts growing February 1st, even if there's goddamn snow on the ground. They keep chaining and clearing all that. There ain't going to be no trees between Holiday and Seymour anymore anyways. Yeah, no shit. Let me ask you this, and you may not be able to talk about this because of where you live at and stuff. I think all the windmills on the Wagner Ranch is a travesty. I think it's horrible. I hate them. And like that area where they're building this new complex, they got a damn town built right there where they got all their headquarters yeah. and stuff. Yeah, because they're fixing to build uh, a what fifteen hundred windmills? Is that right? And I think they're going to build farm? A, a solar farm. Yeah, too. but 
when you used to go through there, those wheat fields used to be full of deer. Oh yeah. I don't ever see no deer there anymore. I know there's still deer there. Yeah, there's. But I don't see the deer on. That used to be a dangerous between Holiday and Seymour at nighttime. There were deer. You had to watch for deer, oh, just yeah. like you have to when you go west of Guthrie, uh -huh. or between Knox City and Guthrie, even or Benjamin and Guthrie. You don't see deer nowhere no more. You know what I don't understand is how all these daggum tree huggers don't bitch about all the birds that are mm -hmm. are, are influenced by all the fucking windmills. Have you seen the whales killed, on the East Coast? Uh huh. The whales on the East Coast. They've got whales, big orca whales and stuff that are just swimming right into the beach. Yeah. Something about their sonar and those windmills in the in the water has missed their, up their navigation, and and nobody says nothing about. It. Well, but why? What do we expect from liberals? They got women that are getting the men competing women's sports, and they don't stand up for the women. They're up for women's rights unless some guy's got a dick and he's swimming against them, and then they don't care. And it doesn't make sense. Our world doesn't make sense. Speaking about whales, did you see where they discovered that gray whale the other day that they thought was extinct 200 years? Mm -mm. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And pull it up. A gray yeah, whale? Yeah, uh, two gals, you know, they're doing marine biologists, you know, and they found a gray whale that had been extinct for 200 years, they thought to be. I wonder if there's any more than just one. Well, there got to be. Well, I would expect that yeah, too, yeah, but yeah. I, don't know, I don't know how the whale gets. Yeah, but yeah, it got to be. Yeah, pull that. Yeah, Rangers there it is. Say these images captured That's in March unreal. are, quote, 200 years, I thought it was event. going. The, the ocean's so big, though. Like, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. so much shit in there that we don't, that we thought was gone. Yeah, man, in the North Pacific Ocean. Don't you know them girls about? Well, the one. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on. She said it North of Nantucket, and she said the Pacific. Century, more than no wonder so much is lost. They don't even know what fucking ocean <laughs> yeah. they're in. Oh, it says they're a one? unit with the New England Aquarium made a rare in the Atlantic Ocean. Well, then they said Pacific just now, and they're talking. Scientists say climate change accounts for the whale's reappearance. Oh, it's climate the change the reason they found it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> maybe we need more climate change. You know, I saw a deal on climate change. They said that right now, the biggest problem with climate change is geothermal. Abraham Lincoln. And, and, and there's the geothermal is the biggest problem. You can't control geothermal; it's natural. They said that the I guess somewhere had a volcano this year. A volcano spewed out more CO2 gas than all the cars combined in the world in the history of mankind. But you won't blame it on our, our cars and no, stuff over here. It's the stupidest it, it, shit ever. It is the, the scam of the of all time. It, and people getting rich off that shit. Oh, and it's all the ones that are pushing it <laughs> other than flying the, around their private other jet. Other than COVID. Yeah. yeah. That was COVID, the grab. COVID, green energy, and the 2020 election. Three biggest fucking things you in our life. remember when we were school, it was going to be the next ice age. <coughs> yes, we I keep waiting ice. for that. Yeah. That I mini mean, ice age. Every year it's going to be yeah. something different. Yeah. That's all. I'll, I'll be ready for that mini ice age to hit. Mm -hmm. No shit. All right, Clay, I know you got, it's fuck Friday or whatever you call it. Fuck that. Friday. Fuck, fuck me Friday. Yeah, fuck me God Friday, so you right. need to get home. We Two appreciate and, you being on here again. You bet. Two and, and a half it. hours. We're going to do it again this summer. Can. We're going to do it again this summer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with you. We'd like to keep coming out again this summer. I'd like to get Mitch on here and Wayne or at least yeah. Mitch would be nice. Get old, yeah, Go Wayne, get old Goose on here. Up. Yeah, he went back to work. That fucking pussy. He told me he, he, <laughs> he ran was, out of stuff to he, do. He was, yeah, that's what he goes. You know, you know why I went back to work? I said, why? He was because I got tired every time my wife would leave in the morning. She goes, Are you going to do anything today? <laughs> he said, Well, no, not really. <laughs> he said, so. That, that whole retirement thing is <clears throat> it's weird to me and maybe it's just because i'm young enough i don't know but it's just just knowing that your days i don't like want to retire said, are you gonna do anything today like, well, fuck, maybe not i don't know does your does your father-in-law have a problem with it no but he stays busy he's got the massive garden in the back he's got so, a beautiful garden he does like, and that's his hobby well, it's his, it's his job, now, right, but, but my job is my hobby. I like what I do, right. so it's different for me. I think, but I can't imagine like you just said. That's a very depressing thought to think of. And my dad used to say that too. If you don't have nothing to do, yeah. what fucking reason to live. Nah. There's no reason to live. If you just wake up every morning and you thought I'm gonna watch the, tea, the news, drink me a cup of coffee or hot tea, and sit here and wait and figure out what I'm gonna have for lunch, fuck that's. I'd be gone. Yeah, if I ever got to where I retired, it wouldn't be sitting at the house. No, I wouldn't let no grass grow underneath. No, my go feet. do I, stuff. I'd be gone. If I, I, I'd go. Uh, I go sit in a bar for a month over here and tell <laughs> all my war stories. Okay, y'all heard it all. Let's go to the next fucking bar. But you yeah. got to. But you got to have something to do. And oh I, yeah. And, and that's when Andy just said that, or you said that. That's really depressing to think about. That. 
That's but it. that but that was the American dream that everybody was got pushed on them. That's y'all's age and a little bit older because retirement's only like a fifty year phenomena. It, yeah. I mean, it's really in the in the grand scheme of human existence, it's retirement's brand new. But you work forty hours a week for forty years, you and you'll get your retirement and your there, social security. And there was a time in my life when I thought, man, I can't wait to retire. That'd be so cool. And now I don't want to retire. I want to keep doing. I can't I, ever slow down. Right. Because if it's slow down, you go to thinking. Mm-hmm. And if you go to thinking, then you get menopause. That fucking menopause is fucking real, man. Yeah, I don't need nothing else to get yesterday, me all emotional and crying. Yesterday, me and Mama both had a menopause moment because her grandkids are getting, you know, they're playing ball and all that. Yeah. And then my boy's coaching his son and baseball. And they well, why don't we go find, a, you know, get one of our gloves. You know, we got all, I've kept every glove, every piece of machinery that my kids ever use. And God dang, then all you know, we go to looking through them gloves, and we pulled out this one glove, and I guarantee you, me and Mama was bawling immediately <laughs> because it was the glove that Jay or Dawson used from the time he was like little bitty till mm-hmm. the time he started where he finally got me. Even when he was a junior high, he he it was his when he played infield. It was a little old no cone glove, and it was in an infielder glove. It wasn't a catcher glove, but. And then when he got old, Lindy started using it. And she used it for a thousand years. And that glove has been, oh, it just signified everything with it's us. It's a family heirloom that oh, means something to you. Oh, God dang. And then, boy, it was just like everything flashed. And Andy doesn't right understand there. that yet. Oh, I'm get in o- the middle of it now. you got to get older than so that. So I'm like, I'm, I'm waiting on the schedule here, but like we're in, uh, we're in a, a league with – several different towns that we're in with like rotan roby and yeah. and so like i'm just thinking of all the miles that i'm going to put on this spring and i'm just like God, well i'll tell you this if, if, uh, if i had to do it over mm-hmm. and i love travel ball and all that shit but you got to give the summer to your kids yeah yeah i mean and, and you always told my kids that hey now if it ever gets too much let me know. Your kids will never tell you. It's too yeah, I had yeah. one. Dawson. Dawson. Dawson <laughs> went between here for the his, his eighth grade. No, that was ace. <laughs> but Dawson went, and he was the ball playing son of a gun. He, I mean, he, catch, he, he did it all. But between his eighth grade and freshman year, which you would think would be where you need to be playing ball, yeah. best thing he ever did was tell me, Dad, I want to take the summer off. Mm-hmm. I said, that's fine. And he took that summer off. So he went from – you know, from that June all the way to February before he picked up baseball. And by the time February got there, he was so fucking hungry for really? it and fresh. And he wasn't burnt out, you know, playing ball. Because, and, and, I mean, and I took him and I took him and I took him. But it, I should have been taking him to see Rushmore. I should have took him to the Canyon. Right. should have took him to – even if you maybe – yeah, but, but back in our day, we played in the summer. <laughs> right. Yeah, we played for a month in the summer. You was done. So then you had July. You could oh, well, I didn't have none of that bullshit. But when we did, uh, you know, that's when you did it. But nowadays, fucking every weekend, somebody's at a ball tournament. Yeah. And, and you can do all that while you're playing league ball during the spring. Yeah. Play league ball and play about three tournaments, then call it good. And give them that summer to fucking rejuvenate their mind. Mm-hmm. Just, Kids need. You fa- can't go cl- climb a tree if you're at fucking Dallas Fort Worth right. uh, ball tournament. Kids need to be kids more. Families need to do more family stuff. We I, we went to to Dallas just a couple of days ago, and we sat at a hibachi grill with the Chinese. I, I assume they're Chinese. I don't know. They were they're Asian people. I don't know if that's a word I can use or not. But really a nice family, husband and wife, little boy and a little girl. And I talked to them while we were doing. I talked to everybody and visited with them and stuff. And I thought, man, your kids are so lucky. You got a mom and dad. They're doing things with you and just going to eat a hibachi. I know it's not a big deal, but we don't have enough of that going on in the world no more. No. We need families and we need yeah. people doing stuff with their kids. And so I'm getting a lot more patient when I see little kids with their families doing oh, stuff. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's the way to live right there. That's at menopause. Because yeah, I miss my days because we stayed at the same hotel when the boys were little. We used to stay at all the time. And it brought back so many memories of so many good times oh. of doing absolutely nothing more yeah, yeah. than just being with your family. Uh-huh. And people need to do that. We were talking about the, you know, the guy in the red suit. And, you know, those years go by fast. It comes by in December. You know, you don't have a whole lot of years where – that is they're a big all thing. believing in yeah. on it yeah yeah in where it's a big deal. thing and you know you got to get to bed early that night and the magic make, goes way make too sure fast that uh milk and cookies are out for them and you know those couple of, i realize it with my oldest that we're on the way out of that 
you know, and then it's just going to yeah, be another thing. How old is Jay, though? Six? Five. Five? Five. So you got six years left. Maybe, probably Maybe. not even six, probably four or five years but I just left. Mean with in your both whole, of them, with both of them, yeah, is, where the magic is where, still yeah. there for all, yeah, where both of them are excited about it. Ours were five yard, years apiece. So when Andy was 10, pain was baby. So at 15, pain was five. And we managed to get through that till about eight or nine without one of the older brothers being a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, I never them. was. No, no, you weren't at all. We got, we were lucky with that, mm. but there's so many young kids today that got older siblings or cousins that it shits over that fast. Yeah. Kids need to be kids. But we, I just, I don't know with, with baseball, I don't know how good of a coach I am because things came pretty naturally to me. So I think I have a hard time. I don't, I don't get why kid, I don't, I don't understand where the struggle well, is. And a lot of people nowadays don't understand just because you suck today right. doesn't mean you're going to suck. No. I mean, I've seen them light bulbs come on. A kid go from the worst fucking player that ever was. You thought, there ain't no way this kid's going to. But the greatest story is when Dawson went to Texas Tech to a baseball camp out there and old Tim Tadlock, who's the head coach now, was an assistant out there. And that was the greatest camp I ever took my, my son to. But old Tim, which now I've I'm actually knowing, but uh, because he hunts out there on dad's boot, but he gets out there and he tells the story about he his best friend is the head baseball coach at Skip. Oh, oh, you, oh, Skip. Well, when they went to school at Denton Ryan or Denton, one of them Denton high schools, they were all baseball players, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they had one, one of their buddies, his name was Hot Rod. I can't remember his name, but I remember calling him Hot Rod. He said, Tim's telling this story. He said, Oh, Hot Rod wanted to be a ball player. You know, and he wasn't no ball player. I, he said he was so terrible. I mean, he was our friend, but we were not picking this motherfucker unless we had to pick him. <laughs> he was he the last said, guy he, taking. He was terrible. Last guy yeah. taking every time they played ball. He said, but he was our good buddy. Well, then finally, the start of his eighth grade year, he tells his dad, he said, Dad, I want to be a baseball player. All my friends go play travel ball and I'll play baseball. He said, I want to be a baseball player. And his dad tells him, well, he said, Hot Rod, I'm – I'm not a baseball player, so I don't know nothing about baseball. But one thing I can do is I can play catch with you. Mm -hmm. So start of his eighth grade year, whether it was five minutes or it was five hours, they played catch. If it was raining, they went to the gym. If they did, every day they played catch. Well, then by the time he started his freshman year at Denton, he made the team. You know, you didn't just play freshman ball. You had to make the team. Right. Well, by the time he – well, as a freshman, he made the uh, Denton baseball team, JV, I think it was. But then by the time he was a sophomore, he made the varsity. And by the time he got out, uh, got to be a senior, he got drafted by the San Diego Padres <laughs> out of that deal. And he, and he was the worst ball player there ever was yeah. just by playing catch with his dad. And he wound up getting a strong arm mm -hmm. and learned how to pitch. And then they, when he got in high school, they developed it because then it's better. They love you when you ain't got – you right. ain't been throwing a curveball since you was eight years old. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because you know they habits. know they got a live arm. Yeah. But that was a cool story about, you know, just because – now they well you got to keep up with the Joneses you if 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 they're getting better you ain't getting better mm -hmm. so we're talking about high school ball and you know one percent of the people that play all the ball in America are going to play college ball mm -hmm. one percent and probably less than that when it gets down but biggest part out of all the kids that I coach half a or. 99.9% .9 of them, by the time they get there, they don't want to play it. When they get out of high school, they're done. Yeah. You know, and they've played ball their whole life. Yeah, don't and give so, up on kids. Baseball's a yeah. hard it, – it's a hard sport. And when I say everything came naturally to me, I was not ever the most gifted athlete, but I understood the nuances of the game. Yeah. I understood basic baseball, you know, and that's the hard thing to teach a kid – with like you got to get them in the game because you're never going to understand forces, force outs, tag in, and all that shit unless you just screw up in a game, and that's to me that's where I kind of well, lose my mind. See, that's another thing I'm going to tell you as a coach right now, and I just had this conversation with my son because he's he's got to coach his team. Yeah, he's like, Dad, what do I do? And I said, Don't waste your time on fucking ticky tack drills. Right. I said, You only got so long with these kids. Yeah. All right. So the first thing I did is I never ever let kids warm up together uh -huh. you know everybody wants to pair them off and me everywhere. so all you're doing is throwing balls over their heads off that right. I, I did a speed drill i go over there 
You threw it to me, I threw it back to you. So I'm basically throwing it to your glove. So you're getting confidence when you throw and roll. You When you throw, you roll to the left. That means you're rolling your shoulder to the left is where you need to be, and you go get in line. Mm-hmm. So I throw right at you, right at you, right at you, right at you. Then then I hit the one hoppers to you, one hopper to you, one hopper to you. And everything's busy. Everything's busy. You know how kids are. You yes. get them out of time. They're, but that is, we call it speed drill. And then I throw you pop flies. You catch the ball, you throw it back to me. That way we're not chasing balls and all that. All right, then when we get through that, you're warmed up. So we ain't got to do cow stinks and all that bullshit. You're warmed up. So then all we do is situation. Mm-hmm. All we do is situation. And, like, this is a perfect example of that. When Lindy was seven and eight years old, you know, we worked on situations. You know, seven, eight-year-olds, everybody thinks, all oh, them motherfuckers don't know any of that shit. Right. Well, it cost me wins. Mm-hmm. Right, I, everybody else was trying to win games. I'm trying to teach you how to play ball game. Right. Like you know, they got the circle. You got to throw it back to the circle mm-hmm. to the pitcher. Right. Throw it to pitcher. We never done that. You right. throw it to fucking first base. You ain't never learned how to throw it. You don't learn how to throw it to first base throwing it to the pitcher. Right. And then when you get up to where you're playing real baseball, that or softball, you're still trying to throw it to the pitcher and you're hesitating on the deal. All right, so we got our ass kicked seventh and eighth year. Well, then the next year we start into kid pitch, right? Well, all I've been doing for two years is situational baseball or softball, situational baseball. We played Winthorpe. Winthorpe hadn't lost a game in two and a half years, and they are bad. They're better than us, I mean, uh, talent-wise, all that. Lindy was playing shortstop. <clears throat> we had bases loaded three times with zero outs, three times, and they never got a run three times. I call infield up. I go to X. My girls come in. They're nine years old. They come in. They know where we're going. Where we're going, we're going to home play. Ball hit that first time. Ball hit to my third baseman. She's right there. She comes in. My catcher's on the base. She knows that he got the force out right there. Yeah. She gets out. Next ball comes in. Hits a line drive in between Lindy and second base. She dives, catches the ball, crawls over to second because she knows she's got the force out there too. We get out. We're three outs in. And we went through that, and and we're beating them ten to fucking nothing, <laughs> and we're or nine to nothing, and it's almost over. Well, then I got to put in them the slug, <laughs> the scrub. You know, right. there's two girls on my team that told me every day, I don't want to play softball. Only reason I play softball because my mom and daddy make me play softball, <laughs> and they can give two shits. So I had to put them in. And I'll be damned if they didn't come back and beat us ten to nine. But uh, Walt, uh, Walter Wolf, he's the guy, the coach for that Winthrop team, is. He said, I'm going to tell you what, I ain't never, ever seen a fucking team improve so much. And to know situational ball at such a fucking yeah. early game, I said, because that's I never, you know, everybody's wanting to teach them how to, uh, you know, do the drills and to do all that. They learn it when you're hitting the ball to them right. 24-7. Yeah. And then they're learning those situations on there. We'd have an outfield. We'd have three outfielders running bases, and I'm hitting ball. My infield's working. And then them three, infiel- three infielders come in, and, that you know, we swap. But, yeah, yeah don't cut. Because I did that the first. <laughs> With Jake, I got a long list of to-dos and to-not-to-dos. <laughs> yeah, to-not-dos. So I'd spend all my time, you know, trying to teach them how to do this and do this, and all we had to do was play ball. Yeah. yeah. I, it's – it's going to be fun, but I, you know, I just, you get lost in it. Cause like, you know, I'm yeah. sure when you were, I'm sure when you and Jeff were doing it, you were just kind of like, Jesus, when the fuck is this going to be over? This is torture. Coaching. Well, nah, just much when, when older was, kids were fun. I didn't like the T-ball shit. I liked older kids. Yeah. T-ball just, was boring as hell. Just, I mean, cause like I said, we're coming out, we're so kind of we never played T-ball. We're coming I into did, the, I didn't like we're yeah, coming we into the we bigger, went. you know, we're coming. It's, this is the first year of kid pitch and all that other stuff. Yeah. So. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I was, I'll do the best. Thing. I was blessed enough in Wichita that, that's Falls. Where all you need—that's why you need everything situational ball. Yeah. You got to know where the force. You got to know where to play. And yeah, and you know the first thing you, so you got to learn how to learn what a balk is. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm sure y'all. But the next year yeah. y'all are going. So you got to work hard because I'll never forget when Jake Jake was that first group I coached, and that group is the one that won state in Archer City, our first state championship. You know, but when I started to. I didn't know what a fucking balk was, actually, by definition. And we got out there, and our guys were like, balk, balk, balk. What? Well, now, balk. wait a minute. Come here tell me what this is. Balk. Point this out. It'd make you look stupid in a hurry. Me and Tony were blessed enough to get to play for the greatest Little League coach in the history of Wichita Falls, which was Lewis McIntyre and be the Giants. Oh, and yeah. when you were a little giant, you grew up in a different deal. But 
because we had high expectations, but we learned a lot of basics. And then we just beat everybody. We played in every sport, football, baseball, and basketball. But it was because of coaches like that and yeah. guys like you that give their time, and we need more of that. So get out and volunteer to help your kids. Don't just turn them over to somebody. Don't be one of these people that drop off your freaking kid at baseball, oh. then pick them up at the end, or they ride home with the coach, and then bitch on them because they don't get to do this or that. Spend some time with your kids. Make them better. Let's go let him go to fuck them Friday. All right, fuck them Friday. Bye, everybody. March for here. Bye. You make it in time. Yeah.